We got a lot to talk about today. We were in San Francisco Mm -hmm. filming our now annual tradition of pissing off liberals on the 4th of July. And we sure pissed some liberals off. Many liberals got pissed off. And it was also, I think, the largest filming operation we've done as far as personnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had an army with us of... A ragtag team of interesting characters, let me tell you. Everybody who's anybody in the Danny Mullen crew was there. We're going to talk about that. But because I think our guests are arriving shortly. Soon. I told them that we could, they can wait outside to when we're ready, you know? Let's talk strategy. Yes. Dino, as you guys know, is famous <laughs> for calling out whatever is wrong with the guest in the form of one word mumbling. Right. And it's one of the best. It's it's one of it's really his only trick. He's like a one trick pony. And that's the one thing he does. He gets naked sometimes. That's true. He does get naked. He's very homophobic. Yeah. And it's comedic. Yeah. That's another thing he does. Dino this time, though, the guests coming in. One of them is Muslim and one of them is Mexican. Yes. They're both comedians. So they're going to have a good sense of humor about this. Um, Ali Malik and uh, Rene Vaca. Ali does he does like uh, Muslim jokes on stage, and Rene, of course, does his, his his Mexican bits. So, what do you think? Who should we attack first? Or I think we should definitely <laughs> go after this guy Ali. I agree because the other guy, the Mexican guy, is a higher status comic. Yeah, he's he's a big. Yeah, he won the NBC Comedy Showcase. Yeah, he's he runs a lot of shows in town. Ali, you know, <laughs> he's got the Monday night. The NBC <laughs> comedy showcase is basically nothing, but that guy's Jesus, funny. The yeah, Mex- he's funny. Yeah. Where did you think anybody tuned in to watch the NBC well, comedy I, I showcase? Know, apparently, it's a big deal. Their viewership is probably half the people who watched last week's Leo and Danny show. Well, who knows? Nobody watches know. TV anymore, Leo. It's but he's a funny true. guy. He he's performed live guy. with us once. So we got to go for the lower status run tier. Sure. We got to go with Ali, and you're going to hit him, Dino, with terrorist. Terrorist. I think, okay, should he mix in something like <laughs> bombs bombs over Baghdad? I don't know. It's too complex a command for Dino. It's true. We got to break things down let me very hear simply. It. Dino, let me hear it. Let me hear the terrorist. Terrorist. <laughs> oh, my God. So much funnier when he does it. And then once we give it to Ali for a little bit, mm. maybe we get found out. He calls you out. You got to switch to the Mexican guy. And he's starting to go illegal. Illegal. Like Let me hear that. Illegal. <laughs> Is this guy illegal by any chance, Leo? Ah, uh, no. He was born and raised in Los Angeles. He's so he says. Of, so he says. You're right. They all I mean, have cover stories. You're right. You're right. He even he looks Indian too. So we'll we'll figure it out. I mean, we'll we'll see what we can do. But yeah, he is definitely a Chicano. Should we just hit him with curry? Yeah, curry's good, dude. Why don't we hit him with curry? Reincarnation. No, Ali, Ali, hidden, Ali with curry would be pretty funny, too. <laughs> Untouchable. Oh Dino, you can surprise oh, us. Yeah, How about that? The wrong... Garlic naan. Yeah, have fun. Either terrorist or curry, whatever you're feeling, whatever your comedic bones are telling you. We road tripped up to San Francisco this week, and the real character, the superstar of this trip, was one mud flap. Mud flap. Mud flap. When I describe to people how he behaves, it's some combination of a freshman who just joined a fraternity in college <laughs> and Hunter S. Thompson. You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. And I also think that the way you describe him as an animatronic. <laughs> yes. And that where it, what does he say? The four things he says he talks about? Mud flap. He reaches a stage of intoxication where his vocabulary gets whittled down to a few phrases. Right. He usually talks about some bitch. Some bitch. Which isn't really a subject. It's just a catchphrase. Vidjas, videos, coffee, Mm -hmm. the Spanish YouTubers he met once and is obsessed with. Yes. And that's about it. That's it. And it's when he's blacked out in San Francisco. Hey, mud flap. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to head down to the marina and get some food. You want to come? Some bitch. Some bitches. Bitch. Spanish YouTubers. <laughs> flap coffee. <laughs> That's all he does. Yeah. He gets to that level, though. I mentioned he's a blend of a kid who just rushed Sig Pie in college and Hunter S. Thompson. What I mean by that is he ingests Hunter S. Thompson levels of chemicals. Yeah. 
Tell me about, because I didn't ride up with him. We took two separate cars to San Francisco, and my car was overboard humor, Garrett Garcia, who didn't bring deodorant, by the way. Very unpleasant. Oh, stop, really? Great guy, but I had to go buy him a speed stick somewhere around Kettleman City. Well, he's a good, he's all natural, you know what I mean? He, he lives from the earth, and I, I appreciate that. Well, his armpit glands haven't adapted yet. He hasn't told them that all natural works. He's the most normal guy in the crew, and he's homeless. He's you know, very like, normal. He's the most normal by far. He's more normal than me and you. He lives in a tent, so I can't agree with that. <laughs> Him, Swolby One Kenobi, mm. who was causing all sorts of problems this weekend, too. God, and Swole. then I had Nico, and I believe that's it. Did I have King Croc? I had King Croc. You had Croc. King Croc, yeah. King Croc, by the way, I take King Croc to Kettleman City. Everybody knows he's famous for his supplement intake. According to him, Danny, I'm really trying to optimize my brain chemistry, man. That's why I got to take my L-arginine and my fish oil and my blah, blah, blah. He's got a, a chemistry kit inside his duffel bag at all times. Oh. But we get to Kettleman City, the place exactly actually where I pulled the ass off this stunt on the rooftop of a tourist attraction at Bravo Farms. We get there. I give him my credit card. Hey, King Croc, get yourself a meal. He comes back with cookies, caramel popcorn, and a monster energy drink. And I said, motherfucker, the reason you feel less than great every day doesn't have anything to do with you having the wrong blend of supplements. It's that you're putting sugar, fat, and caffeine into your body at the expense of all other legitimate fuels. I have uh, one time I asked him, I was like, what'd you eat yesterday? And he, uh, he he looks at me, he goes, five ice cream cones. Just the cones? Just the cones. No, <laughs> I guess the ice cream in it. I, I, I presume they were like drumsticks. Mm. You know, I think he, had, he just like went to like a gas station and picked up five drumsticks. And that's that was his like his entire all, all of his meals the day before. Yeah, this is I don't know what the equivalent is. It's like being a car owner and getting your Honda Civic a spoiler and tinting the windows. But you're just peeing in the gas tank instead of putting unleaded in there. It's odd. It's man. not going to work. He was when we went to the barbecue place that you, you bought you bought for everybody. He didn't fucking finish his food. He threw it away. And then there was another time where he we were getting a meal and he skipped out on it and went and got snacks like to read like later on or like, I'm not hungry. And then one got like Doritos. We got to build King Croc up stomach first. Absolutely. I, should we start with soul food? Is that why do we got to bring everything back to race? Well, I don't know. It's some of it is very healthy. Collard greens. You know, Dino, can you grab me this drum over here? <laughs> this is not worth the delay it's going to take. <laughs> we should, Leo, that sentence. Some collard greens. It was so unnecessarily. It, you might as well have said, we got to build King Croc oh, up from his African roots first. Guano. Can we give him guano like an Ace Ventura? No. The African face from African face. Get Him oh, to the Greek. That was so good. Shit, I don't know the lyrics. I just pound the drums and do the, the African, African face. face. What a classic. You can't you couldn't do that in a movie today, man. Though those all those jokes are gone. You can do whatever you want in a movie today. If, yeah, as long as you don't give a fuck. I there guess. you go. That's my little rant on King Croc. We gotta start getting him healthier food. Yes, we do. I fed and I bought him Taco Bell last night, so I'm Oh sorry. god, you did not help at all. Yeah. <laughs> what is yeah, I, those guys we should we should make them all eat a kale salad in front of us. Like King Croc, Mud Flap, even overboard humor, like a nice kale salad. See what they do. Yeah, I'm all for the idea, and I'm also for the idea of maybe teaching a basic how to be a human class mm. to anybody who associates with our crew. <laughs> I think it's needed. We cover all areas. I do everything Finance, here. women, nutrition. Mm -hmm. I think I fuck. I can't figure out the laundry. I can't fold it and fuck it. I can I can wash it. Then it just it ends up being on the floor. And then sometimes I put it away. The folding. Yeah, Leo. Just... I know your domestic life is a fucking mess. <sighs> on my Patreon, we did a vlog last week in Leo's apartment. My room was cleaner and more well put together when I was 17 years old and I just moved out. You're a fucking embarrassment. Oh, come on. You are an embarrassment. Uh, you know what? My I, The kitty, he likes the mountains of, of laundry on the floor. He likes climbing it. And it's for it's for it's for little it's for the cat. It's for the cat. OK, so everything like you do. Cat. So I'm going to take things back to two years ago. when We were at my house in Orangevale. Mm -hmm. You went on a peanut eating spree. Oh, I left you cracked a ton of shells. You left a small mountain of them on the counter mm -hmm. and a ton of them fell off the counter onto the floor and you did nothing to clean it up. 
You're, you're well, absolutely that, right. Was that for Brando too? Yes, it was. No, was that for it, my cat? The problem is, yes, I had my my lovely mother. She took she kind of babied me a little bit. All right, she would fold my clothes out in the morning for my next my next day's outfit. You know what I mean? She'd fold the little tidy whities put them right on top. Mm. And I think you, you do that for enough years, and all of a sudden, I like to be taken care of. It's apparently why I just like rant, just like being taken care of with blowjobs too. Apparently, your mom overcoddles you. She oh, too much love from your mother it leads to you wanting to be taken care of by women, uh-huh. like you're some kind of king. For a man who has such an acute understanding of all this, you've done very little to correct the problem. Well, your room's still a mess, on. and you're still getting blown constantly in parking lots. What you don't know is that it's gotten better, and you know I, it, I'm severely. Your room depressed. has gotten I'm severely worse. depressed. Leave me, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot of depression there. So you say it, you're it, severely depressed. Yeah. You remain severely depressed. I, I have. King yes. Croc says he likes to eat sugar cookies from Bravo Farms. <laughs> He's gonna keep doing it. Uh, you know, it, it's funny because in fucking uh, what was it, uh, Limitless that movie with uh, to, uh, was it a uh, what's his name? Yeah, the, the guy. Bradley but Cooper. Bradley Cooper. He takes the pill. The first thing he does is clean his apartment, dude. It's yeah. funny when he when he becomes limitless. Mm. Maybe I need a limitless pill. Leo was calling me to get back to the subject of these goons from the road constantly because Mudflap was getting more and more fucked up. This isn't even on 4th of July. This is on July 3. Yeah. We're just driving up to San Francisco. Okay, let's talk about that. He he gets in my car. First of all, he sits in the front seat because obviously he can't even fit in the, in the back seat. Uh, this guy's giant, dude. He's touching my he's touching my arm the entire trip. You know, you drive with mud flap. His arm is touching yours. You in, know, in a you're car. large yeah. when your size dictates what kind of vehicle we can take to the destination. Mm-hmm. Ian and I were trying to rent a van or an SUV. We knew it had to be a van or an SUV because it needed captain's chairs. Mm-hmm. You cannot put mud flap in the back seat of a sedan no you can't you can't do it you can't even fit in you know what's funny we should do as a bit like you should rent a trailer for like a random like get a suburban with a trailer and then be like mud flap the trailer's for you and then make him ride in the trailer a horse trailer a horse trailer (laughs) i wonder how close he weighs to an average horse dude he is giant i'd love to weigh him because i know i know he kind of like says like whatever but i was telling him like yeah look have some fun. Do whatever you want. Gets in the car, eats a giant bar of mushrooms. First thing he does. What are these mushroom bars that are coming around? Because my girlfriend just had one of these too. Mm. I'm hearing mud flap was chomping down on him. Where could one buy a chocolate mushroom Austin bar? Austin would know. The only person I, I... Jacob had a chick over and her brother sold them. That's the only way, I, that's the only way I've ever seen him See, out in the real world. But You'll have like... Uh, oh, shit. Mike, can you turn the camera? You'll have these dispensaries where... They're kind of under the table. You pay only cash. They'll like not have an ATM, uh, and you don't pay taxes or whatever. And eventually, they usually get busted and mm. thrown out. And those kind of dispensaries will be like, "Hey, we have like a secret menu, like wink, wink." And that, that, and then they'll sell these mushroom chocolate bars for like micro dosing. Like you can eat the whole bar and like trip balls, or mm. you can like just take off one little square as like a micro dose. And he gave me three. So I wasn't like pretty, having crazy visuals, but I was definitely like high as fuck on the mushroom. Austin's eyes never get red, but on this trip, not only were they red, he his pupils were dilated. So let me break this down because my understanding is mushroom. My understanding of mushrooms as a guy who's never had them is that an eighth is the gold standard. You eat an eighth. It's a little scary. You might have a bad trip, but you're actually going to be seeing shit. And if you do anything less than an eighth, you're not risking the fear and the bad trip, but you're also not high on shrooms. You might just feel a little giggly and you might see colors a little bit differently. You got to get to an eighth. At what point into the chocolate bar, a quarter, a half, the whole thing is an eighth? Uh, An eighth of what? I don't know, by the way. Is it an eighth of an ounce? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. matter. It has, it's an eighth, an eighth of an ounce. ounce. Eighth of an ounce. It would be like maybe four to five of those squares. Because I had three. How many squares are in the bar? Uh, maybe like four by. You are eight. fried right now. So you are more high than usual. Four by eight, so a good amount. Yeah, like a decent amount. So de- well, I mean, it's a. I had to calculate how many squares of chocolate. Are how there. many Give me eighths break. per bar, asshole? How many eighths per bar? Maybe. Uh, Three. Three eights per This guy. Maybe not even. This Maybe g- just two. This guy. Does that make sense mathematically? I'm not sure. Wouldn't th- there be eight eighths per bar? Because that would be a full. Uh, no. Three eighths per oh, well. bar is easy for me to wrap my head around. Three is a workable <clears throat> number. What you got to know about Fuck, is this guy. Retarded. This slippery fellow over here behind our monitor. 
This guy, the entire time we were in San Francisco, was trying to get access to my Sable to go to Sacramento I know. to bang anime, bitch. Yeah, he told me that he... Seriously, anything... I know, I know. Any way he love. could try to slip in a trip to Sacramento, he would do it. Be like, ah, oh, fuck, this is me. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, fuck, man, my lapel mic. I'm out of AAA batteries. God damn. Austin appears out of nowhere. You know, Danny, if you want, I can uh, grab your Sable and go pick some up in Sacramento. I can get you some batteries. Yeah. You're going to drive two hours to get me batteries, yeah. Austin. No, no, no. <laughs> None of this is even true. Later, that's true. Later on in the shoot, like, oh, we better get some alcohol for Flap and Croc and the guys. Yeah, Danny, if you want, I can take the Sable to Sacramento. And then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll bring it back. I'll be back in like four hours. I'll be... Danny, he even mentioned, remember when you said, like, yeah, my oil is almost, it's low. He's like, oh, I know a good place in Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. You guys I keep know just Russian slandering guy. me on the podcast. Everyone's going to call me a simp and you a cuck forever. It. Okay, I, this I, isn't I, even true. I'll, I'll explain before you just start making well, shit up. Oh. One more. I exaggerated a little bit yeah, on little the alcohol bit. and the triple A. No, dude, for hey, shut up. Months shut I've up. been getting the sleeping on the floor shit and all this. Danny shit. does this to everybody. And dude. then everyone everybody believes got, it. And every, they think. I told him one time I loved. I got a blowjob at a parking lot and I enjoyed it. And, and now I am the blowjob parking lot king. That's all I do. <laughs> but apparently. you make it sound like you've gotten only one blowjob wow, at a parking been lot. There's a few, but oh. still now I'm the blowjob please, parking lot king. Please estimate how many. Please right now and don't fucking lie. In parking lots or just in cars? Because in cars. A lot, a lot. hundred. Yeah, probably, yeah. Probably there we over go. Over a hundred, yeah. I'm sure. always right. In and I'm right lifetime, about Austin, too. I'm 34 years old. That's that's a that normal number. Oh, yeah. Dino's gotten blown a hundred times in cars, I'm sure. He should Austin. be in that nice Mustang. You called me when I was on the way back to Sacramento. I had left my... You called me, me, dumbass. Listen to me. You called Listen. me going, I left my costume. What am I going to do? Oh, is that, what I, is that how I speak? No, I, I left my I took costume my hands, in the car. I took my hands oh, off man. the wheel and went, I left my oh, costume. My what am I gonna shirt do? and my fedora. Dude. Make sure they don't get damaged. Hey, do I turn into a <laughs> shitty cartoon character whenever I'm calling you? <laughs> if you had that guy, kind of, if you ever were yeah. in that place where you were like doing that, like I'd be worried because you have never, I've never seen too much fear in your eyes. Turn into gay bullwinkle. <laughs> oh, Austin, I left my shirt. I left my costume. Austin calls me up. He's like, hey, you Danny. called me. What <laughs> the fuck? Shut up, Austin. Austin texts me twice yeah. and then calls me because I'm ignoring him. I don't want to yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening to a podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, he calls me up. He's like, he's like, hey, Danny, you left your Bernie Sanders shirt and fedora. He actually does do that. And I'm like, it's a, don't even worry about it, dude. I can pick it up when we're in L.A. and I can shoot the bit I need with that down there. And he's like, if you want, I can. Because I left Sacramento. No. I left San Francisco to Sacramento because Nico and I filmed a day off video in Sacramento. He calls me up. He's already down by Modesto. He's way down south in California. He's like, if you want, I can bring you your stuff back to Sacramento. I thought, well, I told you on the phone. Here, here's what happened. I thought Sacramento was like directly south of San Francisco. So I was telling King Croc, because they were like, can we stop and get food or whatever? And I, I was like, hey, maybe when we're going through SAC, I'll drop you all off to eat while I go fuck her and then get back in the car and Unbelievable. leave. Unbelievable. And then King Croc goes and like says that to Danny or whatever. And make, mm. But I didn't know Sacramento was northeast of San Francisco. I thought it was literally on you the way. You know exactly where Sacramento was. No, I don't. You I'm know, not an excuse. You know the coordinates of anime bitch's house. Guaranteed. You're probably thinking of getting them tattooed on your wrist. Yeah. I, I like yeah, You are though. obsessed with this bitch. <laughs> I like this though because you know what Austin I could see in his future? Maybe there's a girl that he falls for that makes him stop <laughs> smoking weed. Can you imagine that? That, 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 that tried to happen once and uh, this girl, this girl is not going to do anything that's going to improve his mm. health or life. She's just an anime. She is. We were in a limo with her once, and she was taking selfies the entire time. You'd actually pair well with her. Oh, really? Your level of vanity <laughs> would match quite well. <laughs> I do take selfies. Mudflap, when he, dude, he did get upset a little bit when I, I, uh, I <laughs> was being a dick and I was picking at his food. He ordered. We stopped on the road. He so ordered. this is when he's eaten an entire mushroom bar. Yes, he so ate three, an entire three eighths. Of mushrooms and 800 milligrams of marijuana gummies. I was high on the mushrooms too, and and yeah. maybe the gummies too. It was 800 milligrams of gummies. Each one of those gummies that he eats are 150 milligrams, right, and he ate a some... bag of like 20 of them. Dude, For perspective, ate... 100 milligrams made me see the devil when I was in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. He had 15 times that. Yeah, 20 this, times that. This mud flap is an animal, and he's <laughs> slugging Jack Daniels. Right? No, he's pounding Jack. And he picks up, whenever we stop at gas stations, he picks up more shit and does it kind of like in secret. If you ever notice, he'll get like a 24-ounce Budweiser and he'll just have it with him and no. it'll be popped open like in the fucking... In the, in the this, this is the mudflap strategy. He'll buy a handle of liquor early in the day mm -hmm. 
and drink it down. And then before people really realize, he'll buy the same handle of exactly. liquor. Exactly. So you think that, oh, he's only drank half a bottle today. Mm -hmm. That's like two and a half already. <laughs> does he do that? Yes, he does. I bought, I've been on a couple road trips with him, and I haven't seen that. That is ultimately you, you haven't seen it because you haven't noticed it. He does it. He, not quick enough. There, were, there was an empty <laughs> bottle of Jack and another bottle of Jack in my car. That was empty. It was still half full that he was drinking. So he's a complete animal. So we stop at a fucking random... He's like, you want to stop for food? And he, and then he's like, if one thing I can do is look for food. And so he found a place to can go to. Can you really say that? The one thing I can yeah, do is look said, for food? That's what he said. I swear to God, you can ask him. I'm not even trying to talk shit. Well, you can brew coffee, too. Great. He's great. His coffee is fantastic, guys. I'm not even joking. It's the best coffee I've ever had. Anyway, <clears throat> Mudflap Coffee Company. He, we stopped somewhere. And he, this is what he got. He got an ice cream shake. He got macaroni, fried macaroni bites. He got a burger, a double burger with bacon, and he got chili cheese fries. Okay, so we got all that. If you can imagine, just bam, 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 four, four items, very large, including the shake, laid out in front of him. So I go over, and I pick at his fries a little bit. I'm like, oh, Mudflap, you're going to eat all this? And I pick at his fries. And he, that was the first time I ever saw him maybe get a little upset at me. He thought I was making fun Dude, of him, like, heavily. It was so funny. It was, man. Leo's, like, eating the french fries and going, Man, my flap. Don't you think this is, like, kind of a fucking lot of food? For, like, one guy? Yeah, that was kind of a fucking dick move. But I guess he was <laughs> high as fuck. And you ate, like, half of his chili he's fries. Like, he's like, well, I don't tell you to stop taking selfies all the time, do I? That's a good point. You do take a lot of selfies. Well, uh, sometimes the lighting is unbe unbeatable. There you are gotta times, take a selfie. There are times. I can remember two off the top of my head. At the sand dunes in oh, Imperial no. County. Doesn't get better than that lighting. <laughs> and then in Yosemite in oh, front of Half Dome. Same And place. El Capitan. The lighting. Leo, I have to shout five or six times, Leo! You have to come do lives right now. Mm -hmm. Not of cocaine, but of exposition. Because Leo is just flexing his bicep with his right arm and taking a selfie with his <laughs> left. <laughs> Look, uh, they're like a currency to me, all right? I send him over to the sugar mama, and that's how, uh, you know, it brightens her day. I'm glad to know she's back in your life. The sugar yeah, mama, for lately. those of you who are worried, uh, we had is a big back. Fight. We had a big fight. Yeah, I don't know. It's like 50-50. What but, do you guys fight about? What is there to fight about? The bitch sends I mean, you money. She blows you once a year. <laughs> no, not. No, it's, what she does is, why we fight is because she, she'll, uh, well, she has a relationship with my ex now, and she'll tattle and say things now. She she uses it against me. If I don't text her all day, like, she'll hit her up and be like, yeah, hey, you know, he said this about you the other day. Well, you should probably stop saying things about your ex. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Sometimes I just air out some stuff to her. She used to be a good friend of mine. She's betrayed me. You sugar mama, listen, all those who love you, they betray you eventually. She's not any different. Dude, I can't believe this. I thought she, like, didn't like your ex-girlfriend originally and was mm. all jealous, and now she's, like, I think that's what it is still, is <laughs> that she doesn't like her. She doesn't like her, but she pretends to, you know what I mean? She wins over everybody with uh, with gifts. and yeah. I was going to say, mm. raw cash. There's no reason you should be complaining about anything your sugar mama does. You're right. I probably shouldn't. I, I'm an asshole. But I, sometimes put, I got to keep her in check. The relationship has to be real. You know, we do have a real relationship. But Does your ex weird. genuinely like your sugar mama? No, but I... Uh, what the I, fuck? Why would his ex like his sugar mama? No, no. His she, sugar mama she talks to her. His sugar mama is an obese 50-year-old woman uh, she's, who looks for love in dirt bags like Leandro de Tavio. She likes strippers, mainly. So I have that look. But, Male strippers? Yeah. Big she would time. be in heaven at Thunder Down Under in oh, Las yeah. Vegas. She, she would, that, that's what she wants. Just 15 Thunder Down Under dicks just surrounding her and she'd just blow them in a circle, she'd be so happy. Mm. She'd be happy. If she went out that way when mm. she was like 80-something, mm -hmm. that's the way she wants to go The out. Ring of Thunder. The Ring of Thunder, yeah. So, I'm sure they probably pulled that on hot girls that <laughs> are, are in me? the audience on any given night of their show. Absolutely. They take them up to a suite somewhere, they line up, they get the circular blowjob. Mm. How much money do you think your sugar mama has put in your bank account? Through the years? I mean, probably, I mean, it's like over four or five years, probably like... I don't know, like a good amount. Well, I don't want to say numbers here because these fuckers are assholes. But I, I can say, estimate right now 135 grand. Maybe, maybe not. But, uh, but 135 grand. The reason why my sugar mama has a relationship with my, my ex uh, is because I parlayed that relationship with the sugar mama into getting my ex a decent job. You know what I mean? So now they have a relationship because she works under her. She, they don't work in the same state or anything. She's in different states. But, you know, I, I, I did that so that, you know, my... Out of college, it was a tough time to get a job in the last like couple of years. So I, I thought it was a good thing to do. Get, you know, well, and it ended up it ended up being very detrimental to my relationship. Don't 
connect your sugar mama with your girlfriend, guys. There Rule you go. Rule of thumb. Actionable advice for all the fans who have sugar yes. mamas. Yes. And God knows there are a lot of them. I know there's a lot of them. Let's get back to talking about a fucked up mud flap. Oh my Again, God. it is the 3rd of July. <laughs> We're not even partying or filming. We get up to San Francisco. And one of the things these guys have a tendency to do, I think I spoke to you about it, Leo, on Sunday morning or Monday morning after the trip, mm -hmm. is that these guys, when they start drinking, they feel like they have to act like they act on camera all the time. That's so true. And it's like, guys, we are performing on when the camera's rolling. And then when it's not rolling, we can act normal. Low Rent Leo was the worst about this. I've really? ever seen anyone ever. Off camera, just... We'd be at a gas station getting gas and some big like Mexican guy would be standing next to me. Oh, and then all of a sudden inside my car, we have Parker going, fuck you fucking fag oh and i'm like god. oh my oh god, god dude don't get me fucking murdered out here there bro. is a group of people that think that you just go around calling people faggot like that's what they Absolutely. think you do. that that is your full-time job you go Absolutely. around every single day of your life you go right up to people and you go hey you're a faggot and people yeah. think that yeah <laughs> just the red dot on the camera goes away <laughs> thanks nico here's your pay all right and then i just walk to a fucking liquor store grab a 40 and mm -hmm. call the clerk a fucking queer <laughs> 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 there's so many people that think that's what you do this is how you apparently swolby one kenobi the first night swolby one kenobi and i are in a pizza parlor and swolby is hammered it's really late i'm trying to go to bed i'm not even talking it's super late for me it's probably around midnight i'm just leaning up against the wall waiting for my food to come there's a guy who's been around the parlor is with two hot chicks super friendly telling everybody happy fourth of july agreeable dude no reason to start any shit with this guy he goes outside this random starts eating pizza on the street one of his hot girlfriends is still inside and he's waving at her through the window me and swolby are behind the girl so the guy kind of looks like he's waving at us swolby starts waving back then gives him the finger and says oh. fuck you dude and I'm just going, what the fuck, Swole? Dude, it's, it's fucking <laughs> mud flap. Fuck. Can you imagine? I mean, you had a corral mud flap when he got crazy, but it'll be in the video. But fucking same thing, dude. We're, we're hanging out, walking around at night. And also, the, his only attempt at hitting on a girl mud flap, one of the funniest things I've ever seen. The Who, female mud flap? The fema yeah. <laughs> Do we so have that is, clip? Can we play have, the clip? I have the clip, yeah. So... It's in my phone. Uh, should I just send it over? Let's here? get the audio on it. Then yeah. we'll have audio, then we'll have Austin put it in afterwards. This is so classic. Mudflap the first night. Is it ready to play right now? Yeah. Female mudflap coming in. <laughs> Where are you going, baby? Nowhere that you need to fucking be at. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a bigger insult than the female mud flap. So, so this is the, the only time I saw him hit on a girl all three <laughs> female, days. Female mud flap is so insulting. So, so insulting. So the only time he hits on a girl is when he goes, he sees her across the street and he goes, she's coming over to like the liquor store where we're at. And he looks at her and he goes, oh, look at female mud flap. And we're like, I'm like, you got to hit on her. You got to hit on her. So she's approaching slowly. And then he does that. And then that's the reaction he got. Nowhere. You need to be motherfucker. <laughs> My flap got a fucking gun pulled on me. Bro. Somebody, uh, needs, somebody needs to animate that interaction. But it's got to be two hippopotamuses in a river. Oh, stop <laughs> where, where are you going? Babe? Nowhere. You need to be motherfucker. Says the female Nowhere, hippopotamus. You need to be motherfucker. But the first night, we'll get to the gun pull. That was the second night, Austin. Mm. But mud flap is just incoherent in a chair mm -hmm. the first night it just mm -hmm. i said this before the mics went out drenched in sweat he's got a halo of sweat around his shoulders like a shakespearean neck like a shakespearean 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 neck ruffle mm -hmm. <laughs> just all the way around his, and it keeps getting lower it keeps getting lower <laughs> it's touching his <laughs> nipple by who about starts yeah exactly who starts sweating up here and then it, it creeps down I'm, this is the, he's the one of the most entertaining humans to be around dude he was a complete legend. Yeah. He's so drunk that first night after doing shrooms, mm -hmm. weed, all the alcohol this guy can drink. The next morning he wakes up. I'm, oh, I ain't feeling so hot, guys. Projectile vomits. What sounds like a 30 gallon <laughs> aquarium into the toilet. Oh my God. I just hear it. It sounds like a waterfall in a koi pond. <laughs> it was insane. I'm, I'm really, I'm really sad. I missed that dude. When he was said I was going to throw up. Like, I think somebody <laughs> said like, Hey, mud going to throw up guys. And like, I should have gone over there, man. It was God. great. He got it all out of his system though. And to his credit, he bounced the fuck back. Unbelievable. And even no. there were parts in the trip where he 
looked like he was about to die. He had so much alcohol in his body. But then you see him an hour later and he's completely coherent. Yeah. Tell me he doesn't. He reminds me of those like old time paintings of the Santa Clauses with the really rosy cheeks. Yeah. When he gets super hammered, his cheeks are a different kind of red, man. They're fucking so red. Yeah. It, like, Unbelievable. It yeah. gets to a point with Mudflap where he goes from having just a few phrases that he mm. says to just a couple of words. Right. He was sitting like this on the side of the bed for maybe like three hours. Going in a circle. Oh and then you would God. just be like, hey, Mudflap, you feeling all right? And he just goes, <laughs> Mudflap. Yeah. <laughs> he just said his name. We're not even, we're not even fucking bitch. with you guys. Like he, he really had, he's a bitch. He just He'll said say his, bitch. He just said his name. He just, got, he just said like the Mudflap words. Uh, <laughs> but on a serious note, someday we're gonna have to, you know, hopefully help him with his with his health. He's young and he can handle it right now, but it's unreal the damage that he's doing to his body. Well, you gotta reach a point where you're willing to change yourself. There's nothing we can do. I think my two fan Jerry fitness program videos prove that. Yeah, that's true. Mudflap though. You're going to see this in the video. Thank God it was captured on camera. The title of the video is going to be pissing off liberals in San Francisco. Mudflap gets the gold medal for pissing off the libs in SF. Oh, 100%. And he was wearing a Trump shirt. I mean, we had the Blue Lives Matter, but he had the Trumper. Everybody was decked out in Blue Lives Matter, including King Croc, who was waving a Blue Lives Matter flag on a big flagpole. After we do a tour of San Francisco, though, we're all along the Pier 39 boardwalk. We circle that. We come into the financial district, into North Beach. We decide we need to go pull one last stunt and do a naked protest. Mm -hmm. We need to drive to do that. So Leo and I get an Uber. We go pick up our respective cars. A lot of logistical problems because we're transporting 10 plus people. I come back. I've only been gone for about 20 minutes, Ubering to my car and then driving back. By the time I get back, everybody's telling me, Danny, Mudflap has entered another realm of fucked upness. <laughs> oh my God. He's talking shit to everybody who walks by. Or if he can't form enough words to talk shit, he's at the very least grunting at them. He's trying to charge into traffic. He did that so many times, it was scary. He's not afraid of cars, on uh, oncoming cars. He doesn't give a fuck. So, he'll, he'll stand in the way, and they see him, and he's good, dude. I was walking. I would be walking with Mudflap following him, talking to everybody, and he would just like start walking across the street, and mm -hmm. I would think that it's green and like it's fine. I look up, and I'm almost getting smashed by a car, and Mudflap's yeah. walking into oncoming traffic, and I'm like, bro, you almost got me killed. I mean, to be it's, fair, it's Mudflap versus a Toyota Prius <laughs> at 50 miles per hour, I like Mudflap in that fight. <laughs> I yeah, think we should too. do that's our next video. Mudflap Just... stands in the road, and we <laughs> test different vehicles hitting him at different speeds. <laughs> I really good. think it would total most vehicles if they hit Mudflap yeah, yeah. at anything over 15. We started, me and Danny started having like so many jackass type, like, oh, let's throw them down hills in San Fran in shopping cars and shit but we couldn't that we couldn't. was mostly you hey, well, i really wanted to see him go down a fucking like lombard street with in a shopping cart <laughs> that'd be the funniest thing of all time i pick up mud flap though we got a hell of act this guy out of there and the entire time we're driving back to our hotel he's alternately screaming horrible things at yuppies which i like and trying to open my car door and dive out into traffic, which oh I don't like so much. God, really? He's trying to do that the whole time. God. But then we get him back to the hotel. And so begins maybe my favorite part of the entire video. Mm. Mudflap cannot leave his house without a pair of Carhartt overalls. Everybody knows that. Mm. Those overalls, not only do they function covering up his lower extremities when things like traditional pants and jeans wouldn't be able to fit. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it. You can't get a pair of Levi's. It'll fit mud flat. You think me and you could fit in his overalls? Yeah, you'd, 100%. We oh, could yeah. squeeze Dino in there, too. <laughs> the fucking Carhartt overalls, they have this cross on the back that is a perfect grip for one to use to control him. Yeah. <laughs> Much like... An Indian warrior would control a war elephant in the year 800 <laughs> AD, fucking BC. I was controlling Mudflap. Yeah. Or to use a more uh, current example, mm -hmm. like some dude in Miami would hold his fucking pit bull on a leash before it fights another pit bull. Yes. That's how I was controlling Mudflap. And I just started walking him around the downtown area of San Francisco, telling him who to talk shit to and when. <laughs> 
So here's an example. All right, Mudflap. You see the sushi place over there? Mmm, so bad. I'm going to walk you in there, and I want you to let everybody inside have it. <laughs> oh, my God. For the video, boy. So bad. I walk him in there. I go, wait, 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 wait. One caveat, Mudflap. Nothing racist. Nothing homophobic, okay? Can you promise me we'll do that? Mudflap. We get inside. What's the first thing that comes out of his mouth? What are you faggots doing? Oh, mud flap, mud flap. He, does, right. he has no recollection of any of that, by the way. So we have to clearly cut that clip mm -hmm. from the video because he broke rule number one. Yes. Don't say anything racist or homophobic. Still funny, probably, though. <laughs> left <laughs> but then finally after a couple more um uh, false starts where he just can't help but say something racist or homophobic which by the way this fat guy in overalls and a trump shirt yelling racist and homophobic things you know how many yuppies have been i hope mudflap never aspires to get a real job oh, because God. this is gonna surface <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> he's done dude oh my God. and also you know there are whatever the equivalent of the typical liberal on instagram is mm. for liberals mm -hmm. whatever the liberal meme page is i'm sure there are many clips of us and especially mud flaps circulating from after this sf trip oh, yeah. of him just <laughs> this is everything that liberals fear america is turning into <laughs> an obese man in overalls <laughs> and a trump shirt it's screaming faggot, faggot in yeah. san francisco so true <laughs> This is everything they fear. Somebody's had a nightmare. Also, the thing about Mudflap is that I was getting is that he he can definitely rape Dino. 100%. Well, we're, we're going to get to that, but I just yeah. wanted I just want to finish up this lap. We did try to get yeah. Mudflap to rape Dino, <laughs> but I was just walking Mudflap around, and he was just every table we walked by. You fucking yuppie piece of shit! What are you fucking eating? And then this maitre d comes out with really aggressive artsy san francisco eyebrows mm -hmm. eyebrows that scream i'm a sculptor but this guy comes out and says, sir you're gonna need to leave here right now you're disturbing the customers mudflap just turns and looks at the guy mudflap with his unseeing eyes and he just goes what the fuck is wrong with your eyebrows they're retarded oh my god <laughs> and then eventually you guys drive by your load mm -hmm. of car your car load of mm -hmm. drunken danny mullen assholes yeah. and you guys all lean out the window and start screaming at mudflap <laughs> and mudflap with his unseeing eyes doesn't know it's you oh god that's so scary yeah i, I was like whoa he's really charging into traffic he thought after it, us. he thought it was a truckload of biden supporters you know oh. what he might have thought it was joe biden and his entire family in an suv <laughs> because mudflap with all the rage I've ever seen and any human ever, <laughs> just go straight for you guys in a beeline. Starts clawing like a polar bear, just making noises. Making noises like the girl in the exorcist. Oh my and I'm God. holding him with all my might, heels dug in, which is hard to do. He's a powerful man. Oh, yeah. Laughing hysterically while a table of terrified San Francisco yuppies <laughs> films in terror. <laughs> Listen, guys, it was it's going to be a good video. I'm excited about it. it well, he did. We well, I was going to make it sound like it was Mudflap's idea to try to rape Dino, but we put him up to it. We did. We thought it'd be funny. I, I literally was looking at Danny and I was like, you know, like he can just overtake another human being. Mudflap can easily. He's so big. And then Danny and me look at each other. And we go, should we have him rape Dino? And then we tried it. We tried to do it. Dino stopped. Dino had his senses about him. He wasn't. He's not easily raped. He was able to figure out that a rape was coming. And he stopped it from coming. Also, our guests are here, so I should be uh, send Dino out. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Dino. I just said let's rape him. Let's rape him. Let's rape him. <laughs> Dino was laying down, taking a nap, and we had we decided that which we shouldn't have. We had decided that Mudflap would romance Dino, so you know, a little petting. We set up the camera. Danny goes in there, sets up the camera, so nonchalant. Then Mudflap comes in and starts rubbing Dino's back, right? And Dino says, what are you doing? That's gay or something? Or then he goes, if you're going to rub it, at least, like, at least massage me. Don't just rub my back, faggot. <laughs> yeah. It was so good, dude. Yeah, from what, I heard, from what I heard, Dino just wasn't having it from the start. Mudflap really? came over and started massaging 
tickling Dino's spine, and Dino just went, "What the fuck are you doing, you faggot?" faggot? Yeah, <laughs> so good. yeah, he's like, "What the fuck are you doing, faggot?" Yeah, if you're gonna rub, rub my, my back. back yeah. if, if you're gonna caress, he's, he's like, you, "If you're gonna touch me and rub my back, just massage it. Don't yeah. just caress yeah. me." <laughs> if we can have a mulligan on that, we should have just yeah. sent Mud Flap in to bear hug, throw Dino to the ground, and try to pull his trousers try, off. To try to take all of his clothes off. Yeah, that would have been unbelievably funny. Dude, in Mudflap, right. he was like, whenever we talked to him the next day about him being in a blackout yeah. or whatever, he didn't, re he, he forgot maybe eight or nine hours worth of time. Over that, my man? You guys sitting the over only, here? He re the last thing he remembered was like Hell when we yeah. had him jump into the bay, which was at like four o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. I, right remember, him there? I remember him trying to play along around. and pretend, don't say it into the mic. I'm sorry. That sorry. wasn't a big deal, but I remember him trying to play okay. along. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So sorry, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah this guy, the side. Uh, that's, that's sweet. The audience can't wait to hear about where things need to be positioned on the couch. Yeah. But Mudflap tried to play along with me, and I was like, yeah, you remember getting walked around the neighborhood talking shit to people, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Absolutely. Do you? Do you actually remember that, Mudflap? No, I don't remember any of that. What happened? <laughs> no, no. And There's after no that is when I got the gun pulled on me because of Mudflap. Like, we're all walking back into the hotel room. And there are these two like sketchy crack whore type chicks that were staying at the the hotel that we were at. The hotel and we, had, we stayed at was a roach flop pad, by the way. It's pretty bad, yeah. Yeah, but it's honestly, still expensive in San Fran. Yeah, I was like, you can't. It's hard to find anything much better, honestly. Mm -hmm. But um, we had talked to these girls already a couple times, and like they were cool, and they saw us walking. I thought back. they were sketchy crack whores. Well, they were sketchy crack whores, but like they, they were. Been they down were to friendly. Bang. They, they might have been down. They might have been down to suck some dick. <laughs> So yeah, saying, and probably give you gonorrhea. Mm. They saw me and they were like, "Oh, hey, blah blah blah, I like your costume. Can I wear your wig?" So I like let one of them. Every wear Every story wig. Austin has involving a girl, the girl always wants to fuck him. In. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're always exaggerating, Austin. There's no. no way this is what happened. They 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 saw me and they were like, oh, we like your costume. Can I wear your wig? This they guy, he, he's the hero of every story he tells. It's bullshit, yeah, this bro. girl came up to me and she's like, hey, I really like your style and your hair. You have a big dick too. I can just feel the energy. I'm off sorry you. that I don't have to approach women. I'm too attractive. There we to go. To do they that. come to him. Okay. Nice. They come to me. Actually, nice. it, it, when we were in that bar, I had like that's, five chicks. That's why he me. has to drive six hours to get laid because they all come to him. <laughs> uh, but I let them wear the wig and then. The guy, like, I guess, says something to the girl and gets her to like throw the wig on the ground. Like, she like tosses it off. He was probably like, like, take that off. Like, because they were with this dude all of a sudden, and she says something to me, and I was like, oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. And he goes, she didn't say anything, bro. Blah blah blah. blah. And I'm like, oh, sorry, man, I just didn't hear what y'all were saying. And we start walking, and then we go to start walking back to the room, but immediately Mudflap and Swolby start going. No, fuck you, pussy, blah, 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 oh, or God. something like that. And the guy looks at me and Croc and pulls a handgun out of his waistband and shows it to us and puts it back. And we're like, oh, shit, sorry, bro. Like, we're really not trying to talk shit. Like, we were just saying, what's up? And then Mudflap's like, fuck you, you fucking pussy. You wouldn't do something, bitch, because he just didn't see the gun. Oh, my God. And we're like, Mudflap, shut the fuck up right now. Shut the fuck up. And we're, like, behind him walking up these stairs. Mm -hmm. So we're, like, snaking through this staircase yeah. while Mudflap is continuously talking shit to this guy. It's the wrong... From the behind the line, too. We were at the completely wrong hotel to be hanging out with nine guys who are trying to prove they're tough and don't give a fuck. Guys like Swolby and Mudflap who just talk shit to everybody. There was, at this hotel, I'm not really sure the economics of these roach hooker motels, because it was, like Leo said, expensive. Mm. 180 bucks a night. So this is not bums just trying to spend the night off the street. It would not be financially viable for them. Mm -mm. My conclusion is prostitutes and pill dealers. Yeah, it sounds right. Sounds about right. There was one dude, a black dude, hanging out there with a pit bull, clipped ears, smoking black and milds, mm. drove off in a Mercedes Benz, mm. That guy is absolutely a pill dealer. <laughs> this guy and the two chicks that, of course, wanted to fuck Austin because what girls don't want to fuck Austin in any story he tells, those were drug dealers, too. Probably. Or they could have been prostitutes. Yeah. I, I don't know if you noticed this, Leo. I never at any point didn't wear shoes inside of our hotel room. Oh, good, my good God. Mudflap was just walking around San Francisco Barefoot, barefoot with human shit on the ground. Know, he's got, oh he's got his, his right toes infected or it's got some fungus too. It's pretty gnarly. 
Yeah, he has nothing to lose then. And step in some bomb we shit. Spent the damage two, has been done. We were in San Francisco for a, like two minutes, and I look over and I'm like, oh, there's a used condom and a pile of human shit. He's lucky like he didn't step on a needle. Yeah, I mean, forget the bum shit. That's just hepatitis. A needle. That's HIV. They have this like multi-million dollar program in San Francisco. I think Garrett was telling me about just for picking up needles around the city. Or no, no, it was our rollerblade guy that we met. He was telling me about it. Speaking of guests, hello, welcome. What do you think about the new bums can't camp out on sidewalks policy in Los Angeles? It just been passed. Is that a thing? Yeah, it just got passed. Introduce yourself. They can no longer camp out on sidewalks. Yeah, speak it to the front of that mic. So turn it around. No, the other way. The other way. Pop filter. No, where the filter is. Yeah, speak yeah. right into the and front. And give Dino the mic over here, Austin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Yeah, Ali. What, uh, what's going on, dude? Introduce you. This is Ali to comedy friends. We got Renee Vaca and Ali Malik. What's up, guys? Welcome, Ali. welcome to the Leo and Danny show. What's up, guys? And don't dodge the tough questions. How do you feel about the homeless? What's up, guys? My name is Renee Vaca. What up, dude? What's up, man? Hey, and you could take you could take our the, our crew into the hood and really teach them like what it's like right, to dude. fuck around. You know, you can't fuck around whoa, in the whoa, hood. Whoa, 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 what just got passed? I guess some city ordinance has been passed in Los Angeles that makes it illegal to camp out on sidewalks. You can no be longer. cited. It, it's a misdemeanor so you can't now. Have your tent there anymore? You no. cannot have your tent. I don't think they can move you immediately. The tents are gone. The tents are gone, Fuck baby. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Nice. Yeah, I can be in a bridge now and like fucking breathe. Yeah, you can fucking, breathe, bro. I don't bro. have to worry about that shit, dude. Like smell that it. urine, bro. Yeah. What is that? Where they fucking they pee their pants and then if you just don't wash your pants for like weeks. But, that shit but, but where are they gonna go? They, I guess, have to, the officers, if you're clearing out an encampment, you have to offer them alternative housing. And there are oh. these government housing units that have been established, but there's only enough of those to house 39% of the homeless population. Oh, ass bitches. Yeah, I know, man. Fuck that, They're dude. probably living better than me right now, man. Where do the other 61% go? Well, I don't even think there's much demand for these government run units because they have strict policies. Like you can't gang rape a pregnant crack whore at these places. They're stepping on their freedoms. A lot of the guys down at Venice like to be able to do that from time to time. You have to be in by say 10 PM. And a lot of these fucking dudes who were cranked up on meth, they're not gonna be abiding by a 10 PM curfew. Dude, first of all, I ran over a homeless dude. Nice, and, and, Renee. But I thought I ran over a regular dude. Uh, <laughs> oh shit. Uh, like, it didn't matter as much. No, I, I, all, all I'm saying is he planned this like me run, run, running him over i know i knew it by the way he fell on the ground and i was like shit man like i was like please don't call the cops don't call the cops was it a suicide attempt no he was trying to get some like, i don't know man some i've money? seen this yeah i yeah. i've had multiple people try to jump in front of my mustang while i'm driving well, those were just chicks that yes. wanted your dick yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah clearly some guy like he like timed it like with my car and, I, and I, he knew I wasn't going that fast. I was in a, I was in one of those streets where you couldn't go that fucking fast. And I hit him. I, but I was just like, shit, dude, because I was like, I was on my phone. And shit. when I told him like, hey man, please do not call the cops. I'll give you weed. He was like, and after I told him that, he's like, how much? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, you fucking asshole. So I, I, and then the cops pull up, of course, and they're like, oh, what's happening here? I'm like, oh man, well. You know, I'm not, don't worry about it. We figured it out. We figured it out. You know, I almost hit him, uh-huh. but I didn't hit him. The cop yeah. was probably psyched. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the cop was like, "All right, all right, whatever, whatever. Just go, get out of here, get out of here." You think the cop uh, wants to do homeless guy paperwork? Yeah, exactly, Fuck that. dude. So, can I you give, turn up their mic a little bit, Austin? So i I give him I give him a half ounce of weed. A half ounce? I give him a half ounce. So you drive weed. around with an ounce of weed on you at all times? No, 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 no. I I, I was just leaving my house. I was like, oh, okay. let me just go to my house real quick. Uh, I probably shouldn't have shown him where I lived. Mm. Um, How much but, weed do you smoke? No, I was selling weed at the time. Oh, okay. Uh, I was in go. college. Uh, oh, no, nice. of course. Uh, I didn't understand. No, man. I mean, th- this is like four years ago, man. And then, nice. and then I was. Where'd you go to school? UC Merced. UC baby. Merced. I love it, dude. Yeah. I love it. You see Mer said it's you see it when you're driving by like the In N Out Burger Dude. and the Anderson P soup Merced, at Santanella. Merced is the fucking city where I found myself, man. I love awesome. that city, dude. Dude, I want to hear Nothing about but this. love for Merced. I'm sorry this is gonna be boring to people, but the California has a university system consisting of nine universities, I mm-hmm. think. At the top of that chain is UC Berkeley, UCLA, UC San Diego, some really prestigious schools. Then we drop more down into the middle tier. The UC Davis, the UC Santa Barbara's. The UC Merced's. The, that's yeah. not middle tier, my friend. <laughs> You're being far too generous about your alma mater. Then we drop down into the very bottom tier, which is UC Riverside. 
and you see Merced, Merced, which is it's That's not right. even, it's not even in the desert. The desert would be kind of cool if I go. Hey, yeah, we're out in Joshua Tree, dude. We just like, go on walks out in the cactus garden and we do mushrooms. Dude. That would be tight. But Merced is in the San Joaquin Valley, next to uh, an alcohol rehabilitation clinic and an Indian casino <laughs> well i made merced fun man for me at mm-hmm. least because for me it was just like a blank canvas mm-hmm. you know i was like oh man dude i can just do anything here especially the acid and the shrooms helped great uh, hell yeah and you started that's how you developed your comedy shit right you, yeah, you had like shows I, well, all over well because well, yeah, there was nothing to do there so mm-hmm. i just like found a, a place and was like we're gonna run a show here and it was fucking dope i was like the man i was a big fish in a small pond. How was the oh, pussy yeah. up there? You see Merced. Oh my God, I cannot talk about that. <laughs> well, married. you were single at the time, right? Oh yes, I was. Well, just objectively, if a single man was attending UC Merced, what would his prospects be like? Okay, if, if a single man was, uh, you know, you're gonna have a lot of fun too, but just you know, be very open minded and stuff. You know, you gotta like Mexican girls too up there, I imagine. Uh, you you gotta like the Mexican. There's everything there because you, you you gotta understand UC Merced was accepting everybody. Yeah, I'm talking, yeah. they're accepting everybody from yeah. from. And like, dude, I, like, I was like, all my freshman class, like, dude, can't believe you fucking got in here, dude. Like, we're all like fucking partying, like fucking yeah, yeah dude. Like, we're all first generation. Of you course. fucked, so you fucked up in high school. Though. You got shitty grades in high school. Oh no, I got great grades in high school. What were your grades? I actually had, uh, actually, uh, had all A's and B's and set my freshman year. Right. Then why'd you go to Merced? Because I was like, fuck it. It was either, it was either the, like CSUN, it was either UC Riverside. Or UC Santa Barbara or UC Merced. Well, you chose the absolutely wrong no, UC. I know, no, no, UC no. Santa Barbara? UC no, Santa Barbara is just hot white bitches UC, and keggers. UC Santa Barbara uh, Barbara was way too close. and I just didn't Too want close to, to what? To my to family. Home, dude. Yeah, he wanted to get away from his, the, the fan. I wanted man. to get away. You got like an extra hour away and you're in the middle of I a 110 also, degree cornfield. I... I I love the idea of just being in Merced and just being like away from all that. I, I just, it was different because I'm from the city. I'm from LA, man. Right. Santa Barbara's not the city. You fucked up. I did not fuck up. You fucked up. No, I didn't. I, you know why? Because when I went to Merced, I did acid. I yeah. did shrooms. I did shrooms and acid okay. in the Oakland Hills. Yeah. I, 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 oh, I, I, I never went to class. I met pimps in San Francisco. <laughs> I, I, I dated a stripper. Yes. It was one of the best things I ever did. I wouldn't have done that shit in Santa Barbara. Right. I would have right. found a white bitch in Santa Barbara. Bro, yeah. bro, and would have been rich by now. None yes. of those things you just described had anything to do with Merced. You found a bunch of hookers in Oakland and San Francisco and you did drugs. What does that close. have to do with a shitty patch of soil because in the middle of California? Geographically closer to San Fran. He could have gone to fucking UC Santa Cruz. That would have been ultimately closer. I did not. Is there a UC Santa Cruz? Yeah, there yeah, is. There the is. banana slugs, motherfucker. Oh, the, yeah, there is a UC Santa Cruz, but yeah. I didn't get accepted from them. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? They're I mean, shittier than UC Santa Barbara. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't even think I applied. Those I, things are... I, 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 I think you get like four free UCs when you apply or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I, was, I didn't, I didn't I'm not going to pay for this. <laughs> yeah. No, but is yeah. Is that what you uh, wrote on your application letter? No. I'm not going to pay for it. No, dude, dude. <laughs> Actually, my dad got arrested, right? during college application time uh-huh. and I That's didn't know what the cool. fuck I was going to write about so my dad got sentenced for 40 years in prison 4-0? Four zero? yeah 4-0 four oh, for, for drug trafficking Ooh, and then I just made damn. that my story I was like Illegal. shit dude and I, and how, I got in what was he pushing and how much did they catch him with and shit? Uh, meth uh, they, I, I don't know the exact number but they caught him with a lot of shit a lot of meth he was like uh, you know running an organization as they say mm-hmm. uh-huh. so it was like you know i i, I put that in my story well, like, you know my dad was a drug dealer yeah. yeah yeah well it's a good thing you learned your lesson and continued selling drugs when you yeah were i did it <laughs> right after i, I got <laughs> so yeah. i did my financial aid what was it like growing up with the pops like that well i mean for me it was uh you know i, I idolized my dad you know what mm-hmm. i mean like sometimes he'll like take me to meetings and stuff oh, uh, you know and like, what kind of meetings it was just it was like it was, it was, I, I, all I remember was like my dad pointing fingers at like men with some women next to him and they're all like smoking <laughs> and so they're drinking funny, beers illegal. and like they all have women. My dad has a woman. I'm like, it's not mom, but it's just a oh friend. Oh my you god, know? no and, way! And dude. it's just like you know, I can just tell my dad is pointing fingers, telling people what to do, and everyone's just saying, "See, I'm like it's gonna get done," things like that. And it was just like I'm like, man, I like the way people respect my dad, mm-hmm. you know. And he ran a restaurant. He ran it the same way. Everyone, it, it works the same way here yeah. too, Dino. Come give me a massage. What the fuck? <laughs> no. Yeah. Dino, take your clothes off. I was about to say, no. really? Oh, dude. No, he's such a homophobe. He won't he do is, any, dude. anything he gay is. you ask him, which is all I want out of he's him. Got a I'm sorry, continue. Anyway. No, no, but it was cool. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, like, you know, I, 
my dad, um, I I try to learn nothing but the good things from him and stuff. Mm-hmm. But, Legal you know, Mexican. You know, some of the fucking evil shit still comes out of me. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. Like when I drink and shit, dude. Mm-hmm. What happens when you drink? Well, when I drink or when I do coke, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm fucking, I'm always feeling like, you know, I'm, man, I'm fucking, I'm. <laughs> You feel like what? I'm fucking. I'm the fucking man, dude. Yeah. He could I'm run a little. Man. He could I run have a little dick. organization. Yeah. yeah. He could run an organization. I feel like I am running my life. So you feel no. entitled when you start doing coke and drinking too much? Yeah. Does that reflect or does that lead to problems with your chick? Yeah. Because you start going through Instagram and start maybe messaging some other girls because suddenly you're like, hey, I'm this fucking comedy badass. Oh, dude. Well, I'm my a college wife, graduate. My, my wife and I fight a lot. Mm-hmm. Dude. About like, what? You dude, we just going after other chicks? Dude, we just fucking fight, dude. We fucking fight out like those there's jealousy issues you know mm-hmm. what i mean there's like oh shit i like you know there's all that stuff but we just had a fight about um uh, about like me feeling like that i'm better and stuff like that because i feel like because when i when i was in merced your chick's hot too yeah i saw her she was at her comedy show yeah yeah she's cute so my, 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 my like when i was in merced i found my purpose out there man and I was like, I was like, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. I'm not gonna stop. I don't give a fuck how old I get. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I met my wife, you know, I was, I was like, you know, my intention was like, oh my god, we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out together. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then so then she feels like because I found my purpose that I'm like um, talking down on her because I'm just like, you know, I found it. How old at is this she? Age. She's nine years older than I am. Wow. Yeah. She looks younger than you. Bro. My wife's hot. How old are you and how old is she? She is I'm hot. I'm 25. And she she's is 35? 34. Yeah, she's 34. Oh, but, 34, yeah. Uh, Nice math, Leo. Uh, sorry, nice I was, fucking I so math. Off. I, I'm, a good, I'm a mathematical genius. <laughs> you weren't so off, but that's a pretty simple uh, algebra. I'm great at algebra. So, so yeah, so, I mean, like... You know, I guarantee if I put an algebra equation on the wall right now, you could not solve it. Go ahead, dude. Algebra doesn't stay with you. I'm sorry. He's All right, just, go for it. He's, go he's, he's, this guy brags about pussy. This guy brags about Math. random intellectual subjects sometimes. Right. He needs to be called on it. Mm-hmm. No, so no, she no, hasn't no. found her shit yet at 34. No, yes, she has. What's yes, her shit? Well, my wife my wife likes to, you know, design uh, a lot of clothes and stuff. So, like, you know, we're planning on starting a business like that and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, she has uh, her medical or uh, job that she has and stuff. So she, she has her shit together. It's not... There's nothing like that at mm-hmm. all. It's just, you know, I come at her in a disrespectful way mm-hmm. where uh, sometimes when I'm like, the I found my purpose, the ultimate thing that I'm supposed yeah. to do in my life. And I come at her like an asshole. Yeah. And that's one thing that me at 25, I don't know how to talk yeah. in the right way, you mm-hmm. know, where I'm just like, um, like, okay, we're... But but it's like it's not my fault. I'm like I'm the young one, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's I think that's probably an issue with a lot of guys because guys are the sex that goes out and gets things done. Yeah. Risks be damned. Usually the guys are a little bit older and a little bit more established in their career. Mm-hmm. And like I mean, imagine how Elon Musk spoke to his fucking first wife. Do you think they were on a level playing field? No. Uh, what'd you do, honey, today? Oh, I just did work. There was an HR dispute. Um, this guy, Bob, was being a little inappropriate with Kelly. What did you do, honey? Oh, I designed the electric car and I blasted a rocket around the fucking moon. <laughs> like, how can that be a balanced relationship? And that's why that relationship got destroyed. And I'm probably condescending sometimes to my girlfriend, slightly, yeah. who's just like a college student trying to figure out her shit. But I guess we just have to think back to... Uh, our days as doing that with no, your yeah. with your chick it doesn't really work though because she's older than you yeah i mean no yeah because because the fact that she's older um you know um i've always just like you know i've I've never came into the relationship thinking like oh man like you know there's time to like i i'm i i already expected the fact that nine years that mm-hmm. she's like i'm that she's nine years older than me so there's gonna be some things that she's already done mm-hmm. and figured out with her life and i'm still in this mode where i'm like i just turned 25 and I want to keep going at it and stuff like that. So now it's just like figuring out uh, the right balance of yeah. how to talk. Yeah. You know, how to talk about things. Because I just didn't know how. Yeah. I'm just learning this now. Just like I need to learn how to be. Because I'm, I'm an asshole with my words, dude. I grew up in that fucking house where I'm right. fucking. They're calling everyone retard. Fucking bitch. Oh, you're Makes fucking not doing shit right. <laughs> fucking what the fuck. Go fucking clean the fucking room. You're yeah. acting like a fucking gay. You know, all these <laughs> things. Like, 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 we grew up talking like awesome, that. So, that, so, so, like. <laughs> When we're over here, like, just when I'm mad talking to my wife drunk, I'm over here like, man, fuck that shit. Blah, 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 I'm a comedy you know? god, bitch. Yeah, Go clean like, my room. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, baby, don't believe that. Yeah. But, you so know, I'm a comedy What's the god. worst, what's, mm. like, the craziest fight you guys ever had? Uh, Craziest fight we ever had. Because Latinas are crazy, bro. 
Uh, Latinas are crazy. Man, I, I would say the craziest fight we had was when she punched me in the face. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, because she told she told me never to leave. Like no matter what we argue about, just don't leave. Don't you know? physically leave the house. Yeah, don't yeah. physically leave the house. So like, there's one time where I'm just like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm leaving. And then I, and then like I really was acting like I was leaving, but I was just trying to get attention and mm -hmm. shit. You know, I'm a little bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I just like to get my attention. I'm just like, you know, oh, she wants to know that you love me. Uh -huh. You know, right. yeah. Right. Right. So I'm like walking. Out, I'm like, this is the end. This is the end. She's like, oh really? And as I'm looking down to get my little petty look, whatever, she like just gives me a like, bah, oh, right in the face. Shit. Left or right hand? Dude, it was, it was the left. Bah. Is she left handed? I don't know. Damn. I don't know that about my wife. Damn, I didn't know that. <laughs> don't I think even she's know. right handed. Wait, what was handed. that? What was that, Dino? Doesn't even know if he, she's left or right handed. Dino, you don't even Dino, know if you're left or right handed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said left handed. I was like, how the fuck do you know that my wife is left handed? Dino, why would you <laughs> why would you just chime in like that and, and, and interrupt uh, Renee and, and and honestly you insulted him a little Dino bit? Dino can't even open his eyes right now. Dino probably doesn't know Dino, what Renee you're looks like. My relationship? A little bit. Why? Oh my god. I don't know. I feel like I'm inclined to say that right now. What are you uh, uh what are you judging? I'm curious too. Uh, that you're both Mexican. <laughs> oh my! No, God. we're both Salvadorian. What the fuck oh. is wrong with you? Why See, are you so I'm... racist? You know, oh. you are representing are you Leo a Danny. You're representing Leah, the Leo Danny show, and you're gonna say something like that on the air? I'm fucking shocked. How can I be racist towards a race I don't even know fuck? exists? And Dino, are you a racist fuck? He doesn't even know El Salvador. And Dino, racist? as a racist, you should be happy that their own kind is sticking together. Hey, dude, it'd be you, much worse if a Mexican was married to a white. That's true. I, I, I hope I don't hear pool. anything else. I hope he doesn't say anything else that's racist the rest of the time. I know he was. We have a Muslim in the room, so you better not be talking shit about about the Muslims. You understand? Ali Malik is Muslim. Terrorist. No, man. Look, what the man. fuck? Renee? First of all, Ali Malik hasn't said a word this whole fucking podcast. I know. Podcast. We'll get to him. Sitting. Ali, what's up with you, man? How are you, bro? <laughs> Excellent. My fuck relationship's yeah. going great, too. We just got married. Oh, hell yeah. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, bro. He had an official... I, I'm going to be going to the white wedding, right? Because you had, yes. the, you had the Pakistani Or the Mexican one. wedding. Or the Mexican. Yes, yeah, so we had the Pakistani ceremony, and then we we're still going to have the, the Mexican wedding. The Mexican slash white. Yeah. yeah. But our relationship's going great. I'm wearing her pants today. No way. But yeah, dude. They actually fit really nice. It's really comfortable. Why are you like wearing her stretching. pants? I, I forgot that today was happening and I kind of just rolled out of bed and this was the first pants Shit, dude, that they were, were, and they, they fit, yeah. right? Can you tell? They work well. I was very nervous about that at first, but they gave me a bunch of butt space. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. And then it gets a nice taper at the end. Mm -hmm. So it fits nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it starts. Wait, what the fuck? Did the did I wait, just, no, wait, wait, I, I what? Did you hear that? Yeah, wait, wait, give the mic to Renee. What, what, what did you hear, Renee? Renee, what he did you like, hear? He was, he was <laughs> saying there's a lot of butt space and a lot of space in your pants. You can fit anything in there. And he was just like, terrorist. No, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He said, terrorist. Dino, Dino. Did you, why'd you call Ali a terrorist? Did you do that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you a terrorist? Oh my God. Ali, how do you feel about this bullshit, dude? You know, I'm used to it, dude. I grew up in Chino Hills. There's always a kid that looks exactly like that. Really? With that common. And, and you know, I've, I've learned to just let it pass. Wow. Yeah. You ever walk in somewhere and get a little bit discriminated because of, you know, because you look, you know, a little Muslim after 9-11, you know, all that shit? Honestly, I wear Dodger clothes very often just to look Hispanic. To look more Hispanic. Yeah, so yeah, you're it, trying it, it, to look more Hispanic. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's funny. It gets me by. <laughs> Dino, Dino, he told me that his his goal in life, whenever he gets dressed is to look as little Hispanic as possible. Are you part Hispanic, Dino? Because he does. No, but people always tell me I am. He looks. He looks. A, doesn't you, he? You know, I think that my my mom cheated. Oh, Austin with the real news. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, I was the guy who came up with that theory. You're welcome because Dino has a larger penis than Austin, his uh, brother. Uh, and they're total brothers, full brothers, so that shouldn't be the case. And then also they have different hair color. Are you white? He's white. Yeah, he's white. Dino's white? Dino is white. Dino does not look Dino white. Dino is white. I mean, it would be strange. I don't think somebody who was a person of color would be throwing out these insults he's been throwing out. Dino's gay. like seven. Dino he is 75% <laughs> German. <laughs> He's but he looks German like that. Fuck. We think he's struggling with his sexuality and he takes out that turmoil on our guests who have any sort of thing that's not typical about them. Seriously. If we have a guest who's not a straight white male, they get chipped at by Dino from the third mic. He, the, it's Fourth so mic. true. It's funny, just to review so far, like out of nowhere, he said that the, the only thing wrong with you is that you're Mexican. Yeah. And, then and then he, he said terrorist. terrorist into the mic. When Ali was speaking, which is really fucked you know, up. It's not 2002 anymore, okay? The is terrorist Austin, jab is invalid. 
is Austin not giving you his leftover women? Like these Dude, Austin, girls? yeah. There's actually only a fan who doesn't want anything to do with me, Austin, or Leo. She just wants to fly to LA to lick Dino's asshole. It's a true yes. story. It's true. She's man. not licking my asshole. He thinks it's gay for a chick is this to lick a live your asshole. Podcast? No, no, no. no. Oh. Yeah, this there's always some things we gotta clip out for various terms of service Definitely. reasons. Definitely. Definitely. Okay, so Ali, uh why, you, why were you asking that right? No, I thought it was live if I say okay, do I have to watch what I say? No, you don't yeah, have to say whatever you want. Yeah. You can also say faggot and cock okay. and balls, whatever you want on this podcast. Dude, We're good okay, with it. Can I say something? Yes. Oh, yeah. no, Talking no, to the mic. It's too racist. Say it's too racist. It's too racist. It's too You're Mexican. Say it the you can most do you racist want. thing ever. Yeah, you're, you, you're good, bro. You got to pass. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want. It's racist. Dude. You're not black, say, so you don't say. have a perfect force field around you, but it's pretty close. It's close. It's good. There's no black guys in here. I at least yeah. need one black guy in here to say it. Damn it. We usually have, have King, a black guy. Uh, we have King Croc. Yeah, we, we generally have... have, have yeah. I can call King Croc and ask permission. If he's on the phone, would you be willing permission to say Permission for what? If he's on the phone? If he's, if he's on, on the, the phone, phone, it counts, right? Uh, I got a FaceTime that gets the black guy too. Another black guy. Of my black guy sites. What anti-black statement do you want to make right now, Renee? <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah, we can cut it. I don't believe you, fucking. <laughs> yeah, dude, he want, he wants to cancel. Yeah, he's you. trying to even ground. No, man, no, no, but uh, it wasn't. No, but uh, okay. So, so you know how like when you slip up and say the n word, like, at least like when I grew up, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to be black. You know, what I mean, I you know, and there's times where I'll say it, you know, like by myself, you know, but um, <laughs> you're just in the shower. In the shower, in you the know, shower. like a song, you okay, know, of course, like of course, like like yeah. that, like you know, that's what I mean. So we've all done it. Yeah. So I, I was just... planning my special. Mm -hmm. And I'm over here like, all right, it's five minutes about me, 10 minutes on my dad, 10 minutes on my mother, five minutes on my relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's the 30 minutes, right? And I was just there like, and, and, there, was, and there, was, there was someone else right there next to me and he was black, but he was on edibles, like super fucked up on edibles, man. But, you know, I was just there explaining to me, see, fool, that's my special right there. Bang, 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 bang. And if you don't know, now you know. No, you <laughs> said it, but I said it, Damn. but I, but I said it just like in the flow of, I was like feeling in the moment mm -hmm. yeah. and I was just there and I turned around like, Oh shit. <laughs> You're black. Hey, well, oh, oh, was shit. this at a comedy club or was no, this just a no, guy no, next no, to you no, on no, the bus? No, 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 There was another white, there was a white dude next to me. He looked at me like, <gasps> like we were all just waiting to see what fool was going to say. We we're just there like, Oh shit. And then fool was just there like <laughs> fucked up on edibles. Like, is that this guy's name? Fool? Yeah. Huh? And he was just there fucked up on that. I was like, ah, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he That's great, sleep, dude. dude. But if he was up, uh, he would have probably fucked that, me up. That's a big <laughs> thing to unpack when you got a head full of edibles. Oh, fuck. He just said that. I got to think back to the triangular trade <laughs> for molasses and rum and slaves. Got to think back to the plantations yeah. and Abraham Lincoln. Ah, oh, fuck it. You can say the N word. It's too much, Dude, man. I'm, I, I get, I get, uh, I used to be uh, racist to. Not racist. I wasn't racist. I, I guess I would be like, you know, at first like disgusted by Ali's hands. <laughs> What's up with all these hands? Ali's hands are very short and small. They have yeah, short yeah. fingers. And they always have bomb powder. And every on. time he eats bomb weed. Powder, and every time he. <laughs> oh, and, 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 like, <laughs> and, like, and like, and like, there's times when we go out to eat and stuff. Yeah. He do has, you have very small hands. Can you yeah, tilt yeah. the camera over that way, Dino? <laughs> but your cock's well, solid, though, right? Giant hands, though. That's yeah, I'm a giant. I know, but like, yours look like. Like, like, you know, have you ever seen fat yeah, girl toes? Like, fat girl toes. <laughs> they look like, uh, they, they do sort of look like one of the Oompa Loompa on the Wizard of Oz's hands. <laughs> but I would, I, I'm jealous of his hands when he jerks off, though. Like, he could probably get two hands on his yeah, cock. Yeah, he probably get some good tension on his cock. Yeah, good sure, cockpicks. Yeah. Great yeah, good, cock yeah. Yeah. cock picks. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Who's the midget comedian? Look big too. Yeah. Brad Williams? Yeah, Brad Williams. You look like you have Brad Williams' hands. I, also, I don't know <laughs> if that's you or Williams sitting on the These couch. guys, have, you guys have been all around all the greats comedians, huh? You guys have, what, who's the craziest fucking uh, guy you've been around? And, I don't know, most, uh, what were you most starstruck by? Uh, um, I think I was more starstruck with Russell Peters mm -hmm. just because I grew up watching him so much. Sure. And he was kind of funny. He came up to me and he just looks at me. He's like, I'm trying to figure out whose nose is bigger, mine or yours. <laughs> <laughs> and and I like that. Like he immediately broke that that yeah. that, that that ice. And Bill Burr was a fun guy Bill as Burr well. Awesome. Super nice. He murders, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. It's everyone unreal. goes. The, the, the reason why I wanted him to go first because Ali gets starstruck by everybody, <laughs> and that's why he did. One time Ali tried to send me a video like, dude, should I post this on my TikTok? And <laughs> and it was a video of Ali like, hey guys, I'm oh, a stand-up no. comic. 
and I haven't done comedy in three months because of COVID. And I and I missed it. And it's like a Was that really the whole video all in? No, 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 no. The video while he's talking in the background while a bunch of pictures of him with comics. Oh, stop, going, dude. The Ken Jong, the Kim Jong. Oh, come on. Do you remember that? Let me let me and I was defend like, myself here. Fucking gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the correct response. Dino agrees. It was lame. I didn't post it. It never got posted. This is when TikTok had first started in the during the pandemic where the you know trend was going up. I was like, I gotta do something, try mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm a very new comic, you know. I, Ali I, runs a, a good show at the at the fucking Haha ha Comedy Club, and yeah. it's Thank two you. great shows. And and Renee also, and it's like it was my first comedy show I did was his show. I think yeah. exactly, exactly. So it's it's tough to you know also focus. He has a lot of producing stuff to do all day, so it's tough to sure. focus on the online shit, which is important nowadays. Also, yeah, but yeah. I mean that doesn't excuse him absolutely jerking himself off with That's a shirt. Sure. It's true. It's true. <laughs> he was. Wait, oh, I met Bill Burr and Whitney Cummings. And <laughs> <laughs> like who was that? For? It was it was just a cheesy picture of me and all of them. It's I'm a, like this. No. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what's funny is that is, is that we'll see. What can you give me the mic? I'll leave I was know. I was hoping. Uh, sorry, no, you know what's funny is that we'll see other comics like post those pictures. Like 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 we 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 know a comic yeah. that does it all the time where he'll post a picture like oh just hung out with Bill Burr but we're there to see his actual conversation with Bill Burr and it's just a quick hey Bill can I get a picture and Bill's like yeah sure yeah and yeah, just yeah. walks away like you did not hang out with Bill Burr dude yeah I uh, <laughs> as much as I like to talk shit I'm on people kidding. like that no dude, but he uh, no sorry go on. I do I'm just saying everybody has that though yeah. as much as I like to be the guy who's like oh you clout chasing wannabe star fucker piece of shit Ollie we all feel no, that no. that lizard brain attraction when somebody rich or famous or big in the industry walks into the room for you guys at stand-up comics for me it'd be stand-up comics too but also a guy on fucking YouTube I secretly want to get like uh, my fantasy is that I'll be hanging out at a party in like Faves Banks or David Dobrik no, no, like, what's course. up dude I love your stuff come over and start talking to me You're like they'll crack me a beer and give it to me and then a paparazzi will pop up take a picture and send it to me and I'll like oh I'll reach Share. This is just you know what are we no doing? no okay okay see, share real you see, quick. see that's yeah. cool right there um and and then like Ali and I we're lucky enough to actually have to talk to these dudes mm -hmm. like because we, we have to because we're running the show whatever mm -hmm. so we, but like uh, we're, uh when we see comics uh that like they they start flexing mm -hmm. on it right there like that's when that's when we start laughing and it's just like and they weren't even you didn't even have to talk to him like we did we had to get him ice. The, we had to get him ice, dude. <laughs> the LA, because I know that the social media scene is so lame in terms of everybody just jockeying for collaborations and some sort of acknowledgement. But most of the time, I don't have to deal with it. If I don't go on Instagram, if I don't read comments, I don't know what anybody else is doing. I don't watch a lot of YouTube. But you guys, the amount of dick sucking you must see go on in clubs. The conversations you overhear about motherfuckers. You know I'm opening for Brad Williams' opener on Sunday. or oh, yeah. You know Bill Burr liked a tweet of this guy I opened for oh, six months ago. I, my career is fucking going places. I've seen a lot of dick sucking. I've sucked a lot of dick myself. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're all guilty uh, of it. The, the, yeah. There, there, there's yeah. a lot of it, uh, but <laughs> but like when when I tell you like when there's like loyalty when a future is actually paying, like like getting paid from the headline or good good money like mm -hmm. there's some good good loyalty going on, um between like a lot of comics like 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 if a comic goes through something like he'll legit feel for it like oh man that's that's my brother wait man, get concrete brother. with me who are you talking about. Who who opened who have you opened for that's super loyal to you who's big? Who is uh, like who is like um covered up you say like roofing a chick who wasn't your wife and kept it out of the press? <laughs> I can't no uh, no no uh, that's no. an exaggeration. No, no, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> For instance, we had Chris D'Elia's opener on here, and well, like he you. was super loyal to D'Elia the entire time. Everything was going awful yeah. for Chris. Right. And I think that's what you're getting at, but I'm just yeah. wondering if you have any other examples. I was, I was, I, I was, I was going along those lines as well, but, uh, you know, I, I have like, um, you know, like an example, like the, when I opened for, I mean, this, this is not a big guy now, but he was a big guy back then, Willie Barcena. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I opened for him, his... He's his, big in Merced. 
Hey, he's big in Merced. <laughs> Merced was on HBO and shit. Right? I never so heard of it. He had an HBO. Well, Wendy Wendy Marcel was like big back then. He was like one of the like you know when the Latino comic scene mm-hmm. was he's coming done, up. Like, the <clears> Tonight <throat> Show, like how many times? No, he's done like the Tonight Show with Jay Leno like thirteen times. But it doesn't That's matter. That's crazy, anyway. bro. But it's like uh, when I opened for him, his openers were super loyal to him, and it was just like like and he would treat us like shit. Dude, wow. like, 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 where, where it would just be like, we had to deal with like some anger and stuff, um, alcoholism type, yeah, shit alcoholism okay, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just like, all right, dude, where it's just like, you know, where, but then there's, there's this guy just loyal to him, dude, and it's just like, and it's because of the that I guess that idea of, you know, you're getting paid, mm-hmm. and and you're you're gonna live a life that you probably all, all your other friends would be jealous of, kind of, because you're you're on the road, and sure, doing right. all these things, and it's like, dude, but. At the end of the day, man, I don't, I've never got to live that future life. Right. Uh, Where you're selling out everywhere and just no, no, uh, oh. because I don't know. I, I guess I guess because of the idea that uh, people people have taken me out on the road and stuff like that, and and I've been taken on the road by a lot of people. I just did um, uh, a weekend with Greg Wilson in El Paso, and and we we're talking He's, about Greg Wilson's unreal. Yeah, dude. so he's the most unbelievable, like just crowd work guy I've ever yeah. seen. Mm-hmm. You need to see this. unreal. So so Greg Wilson is also a dirty comic, mm-hmm. and he and he he loves that crowd work stuff. And yeah. he, he was talking about like man, because after I won Stand Up NBC, it, it, things were like you know people were like, oh, you think you're a headliner? Let's. What see is up with can... the Stand Up NBC thing? I was oh, talking... I, I was shouting it out, dude. It's solid. I was talking shit on the idea that NBC has a program that anybody watches. I mean, it's sweet. I know you're a yeah. great comic because I've seen you live. You were awesome. Good, yeah. But uh, I mean, how many people honestly watched you win this NBC contest? Well, it was it was uh, it's not it's, it's not, not a it was even broadcasted anything at all. So zero people watched it. Yeah, it was all for it was all for industry. So I was being very generous, Leo, when I said half the amount of Fuck people you, listen dude. to this podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's true. Yeah, you're right. You were it's all generous. for industry. But yeah. I know I've seen you live and you killed it. Yeah. So no. I'm I respect. No, but yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. Anything that the corporate comedy contests are putting on is just, I assume, you it's had to be clean. It had to be a clean thirty minute set, right? No, it had to be a clean five minute set. Oh, five minutes. Okay, yeah. damn, that's tough, man. But it, but it was uh, but you know, I still did my uh thing, but it, like the whole thing with that was, like after NBC and whatever, I started like, you know, getting some headlining gigs, and then it's kind of like I'll get some feature gigs here and there. Mm-hmm. But Greg Wilson was like, yeah, as soon as he started getting some recognition, somewhat. It was just like people never really took him on the road because, you know, they never really wanted to follow him because yeah. he was so, you know, Greg Wilson, yeah, he fucking murders. He dude. murders. He dude. fucking, and, and I'm not trying to fucking, you know, jack myself off, but I fucking murder too, dude. Hell yeah. And, and, and it's going to be like, you know, uh, the only people I've, I've realized are willing to take me on the road are the ones that also murder. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's just like, you know, that, that they, <laughs> they, don't, to, they don't want you to do better than, than them. Yeah, basically. you know yeah. what I mean. And, and yeah, comedy is fucking tough, man. It's 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 a tough game. You guys are in the you guys are tough fuckers, man. You got to do it for a long time, and then eventually you just you you kind of like outrun it. You out marathon everybody else. You're right? doing it too, though. You're putting Thanks, a lot man. of work, Leo. Thanks, brother. You're appreciate really it. Pretty funny. I, I want to know about this. Appreciate it, Ali. You're funny too, man. Thanks, man. Well, that was, was a really sincere exchange right yeah. there. Fucking you're fu- <laughs> there we go. Dino <laughs> livened it up a little bit. Dino, you he made it say more terrorist real. again? He, he said did. gay he this did. time. Oh, he said gay this He said time. gay. Oh. Which okay. doesn't really sound like terrorist. I'm surprised you overheard it as that. But I want to hear about, because I know how much people in the YouTube industry make. I know how much people in podcasting are making. I'm not sure how it goes in stand-up. Yeah. Obviously, there are guys like Russell Peters, who probably makes $20 million a year, as does Bill Damn. Burr, Louis C.K. Yeah, Russell Peters is one really? of those guys you do uh, not expect to be making the kind of money he makes, but he's a fucking monster. He was the highest paid comic for a while. Wow. For a long time. He, he just, kills. He's big He sells out everywhere. Big Great, around the world. Great around the world. crowd work guy, too. How much does an opener make? You're talking about opener loyalty. The number one opener for this drunk Mexican guy just loves him, even though that this oh, the main Mexican guy yeah. is verbally and physically abusive. How much do those dudes make? Well, it's like uh, when you're on when when you're with those kind of like like let's say Gabriel Glesses, for example, mm-hmm. right? I know he has his openers on salary, so wow. it's like no matter how many shows we do a week, you're gonna get. Some like a six salary figure, kind of stuff. A six figure salary. I don't know. I don't. I don't Damn. know exactly. It's okay. We can be a little more specific here. I know Lenochi, Chris D'Elia's opener. <clears throat> he made on his best year when D'Elia was blowing up before everything went south for them. 
150, 150 as an K. opener for Chris D'Elia, 150 K, which yeah. is awesome money. That's unreal that's, for to be a comedian, dude. That's fucking the dream. Like you know? Kevin Hart's well, opener, the dream. Have the, the dream nicest to make 20 cars. million. Right, right, right. Like Kevin Hart's openers have the nicest cars, multiple of them. So yeah, you know they're making decent money. Sure, wow. Kevin Hart, I guess, is just on a level above. Yeah. Exactly. Any other. He's but, not even a comedian. He's just if you are black, you're a Kevin Hart fan, and you go to his stadium. Shows. Exactly. He and, has an entire people yeah, so, built into his yeah, audience, yeah. and I. I like Kevin Hart. That's not a slam at all, but it just it, may, it makes complete sense that his openers, even if he's giving them one percent of the ticket sure. revenues, that's still three hundred thousand dollars easily. And but you're asking about like you know the 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 random comic, right? The random headliner. Yeah. It, you know it it depends. Some of them take care of you a little bit more. At least you won't come negative. Mm. Uh, but you're not making a lot. Mm-hmm. You know so what's not a lot. Like well, if on who you're... if you're the host of the show, you might make a little bit more. If you're what's a little, you bit more? a little bit more, like. 200 that show 150 well, depends, that show it depends on where you, where you're depends where you are it depends where if the club's are. also paying you let's quit fucking around how much money did you make this last tax year Ali uh off just comedy yes uh, under six figures for sure how uh, much because that could be a $99,000 or it could be $1 do, do a lot of tax people listen to your podcast uh, they, they, they've, they've threatened to call the IRS on me 50 they times have not he that. is lying <laughs> one time <laughs> so a lot of it's cash too so you know I don't and even though I can't even keep track of that, mm-hmm. but um, I, it's enough where I still have to have a day How job. How much, motherfucker? Ooh, Oof, I, I'm motherfucker. gonna say I'm around forty. All right. Yeah. Sure. Oh. Yeah. Off, that's, com- off comedy. You still need a day and job. That's, off forty. Like, I guess you have a yeah, wife. Yeah. So you, I'm, yeah. If you and were I single, rent, I like having a car, a nice car, stuff mm-hmm. like that. What kind of car do you drive? A Mustang. That's yeah. It's that's not okay. the nicest, but it's the nice Mustang. These assholes drive Mustang too, and he doesn't make any money on the uh, left. I'm gonna ask Dino, what do you think about the fact that uh, uh, Ali is? It's a new his, one. It says brown. <laughs> his his license plate says brown guy. Dino, how do you feel about that? Well, do you have a GT? <laughs> no, I don't have the GT. Well, that yeah. that shows you. It's he has even, a GT. It's not even V8. That doesn't show me anything. I don't know anything about cars. What does that mean? That brown people can't afford V8s? Is that what you're <laughs> yeah, yeah, what are you yeah I guess to say, they can't Dino? afford a V8. You didn't make anywhere oh, near man. 40 grand last year, Dino. No, but... Uh, I it's... have a dad that bought it. <sighs> but he, he, just bought, he just bought himself a, a BMW, right? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to buy a BMW? Okay, gonna I'm going to tell you right now that's a terrible idea, Ali. A BMW? Put the mic back on him real quick. I'm a little bit into finances right now, and sure. I can tell you'll be a fucking retard, especially as a Middle Eastern man. You guys are supposed to be on top of that sort of thing. Sure, it, but we also make poor decisions when it comes to, to status, mm. and a BMW holds this status that I've always wanted. You need to quit. Had. You can't bomb on stage and go into a BMW. Oh, God. Scary. You can't bomb the World Trade Center, though, as Dino would agree. But <laughs> Ollie, <laughs> Ollie, what the fuck, dude? How much is this Beamer you want? It better be a three series. It's a three series. Okay, so okay. that's what, 30 grand? It, it, it's only 20,000 miles. It's a couple years old, mm-hmm. and I'm getting a good deal. My friend works for BMW, so he's looking it up. But it, the thing is, it's low in miles, so I'm assuming that it, at least it's a new enough car. It won't give me too much problems, but I understand the risk. It's a BMW. Yeah. They always give me problems. Exactly. The, the, my dad had one for eight years before it gave him big problems. Mm. He let it hit like 120,000 miles before it gave real mechanical. Yeah, I got a 2012 Corolla. There you go. That's right, Renee is responsible. That is the most brown Indian thing you could do, and he's not even Indian. I drive a piece of shit sable. Have you seen my car out there? Mm-hmm. It hasn't been washed in six months. It's covered in L.A. air grime. Mm-hmm. It's a combination yeah. of brake dust and fog juice and well, gay guy right. jizz mm-hmm. and homeless Things man My girl shit. has a really nice car. All right. So you're a, feeling insecure. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I need to be around there no you can't see this is the problem this the immigrant mentality or the you immigrant <laughs> it's I, I the great thing about it this is starting to sound hostile Dino you know, when you're doing that when I'm talking about the immigrant mentality we got to be careful but Sick fuck, I'm man. you cannot be tricked into the keeping up with the Joneses thing that the white guy is sure. all about I know Ruman for example Ruman was obsessed with the idea of having a white girlfriend in a lot of of immigrants and minorities they like the idea of having that white girlfriend trophy and they come to LA and they see all these fucking like cool dudes who went to Harvard and have slick back hair driving Range Rovers and they're like I want to be that guy my girlfriend just got a new car I want to pull into the garage with something comparable but the problem is you doing that you getting another car when you already own a semi-expensive one is just going to destroy any hope you have of being wealthy long term 
Are you tur- are you trading in the Mustang? I am trading in the Mustang. All right, so then and the payments to... for this car will end up being cheaper than the payments I was making for the Mustang. I think you fucking buy Renee's car off him. Yeah, dude, get the Corolla. That's why I haven't made the decision yet. That and, and, like, like, is your chick gonna leave you because no, you're not so driving not. a Beamer? She you could drive anything. You could drive anything she'd like. I, she's I, a great I, chick. I wear her pants. She's 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 <laughs> in the. So so, so kind of like to go back on the future stuff. Uh, like as far as like it all depends on how much money you want to make. Like uh, mm-hmm. as far as stand up, you you I've made. I haven't had a job in, since I started comedy. So nice. six years. Other than dealing drugs. Yeah. I was inside selling mushrooms. <laughs> you guys need some. I got some 40 and 8. Those are, <laughs> people in our crew are taking them right now, so we might take you up on that. No, oh, so if you guys, uh, if, if like, yeah, of course, like, besides, you have side hustles. Every entrepreneur has their side hustles. Mm. And, uh, you know, but, like, my main hustle has been comedy. Mm. And, and, it's go- and it's always been off my production of shows. So I've always been producing my own shows since I started doing comedy. That's why I, I kind of skipped the open mic scene when I started. I never had to deal with the fucking open mics and talk to, mm. you know, comics that don't give a fuck. It's and, awful. And yeah. everything. It's just, you just leave. Like, you, I, felt like, I felt like I wasn't funnier when I left those things. I was like, ugh. You know, so... Yeah. I just started doing my it own shows. It is a foul feeling when yeah. you walk out of an open mic. Yeah, so I was just uh. there like I'm gonna do my own shows. I'm gonna I'm gonna have I, I I know exactly I know how to do business blah blah blah. I have friends. I'm popular in college. I'm just blah blah blah. And I'm, I just came to LA where I'm born and raised. I have friends and family out here, and then just slowly gained my fan base and just did my own shows. So when you when I run my own shows. You have at first it was like fuck you don't know how to do it but then you're making money let's say like uh, if you do it right you can make a thousand per show or if you you know if you're like far far away and you know they're gonna pay more you can make more you can get sponsorships all these things so like like sell some shrooms yeah for the door, you know man. yeah yeah no exactly you know what I mean like uh like all all, all these combination of things uh or you can win a contest like when I won Stand Up NBC they gave me thirty thousand uh, dollars for this for and you didn't spend it on a car I didn't spend you see it on Ollie a car. Jesus. no you know what he did spend it on tell what you did spend it on. what'd you spend it on Kobe yeah. Bryant died. Uh-huh. And I bought Lego game tickets when they first. For like 6,000 tickets or something. Oh, my no, God. No, no, they were not 6,000. No, no. 6,000 a ticket. First of all, he's lying. No. Uh-huh. I got him at 1,000 a ticket. They were like $3,000. Uh-huh. All right. And then after he, I got him before he died, they went up to like six, 7,000 in value. Each. Oh my God! You didn't sell them. Uh, I love. I was a big Kobe fan. My you brothers were just like excited to go, and they were like, "Oh my!" My brothers are like they're little, so they were like, you know, they even cried at the little ceremony, whatever. So I was like, "Ah, fuck it!" You know, it's not the last. I'm not gonna get excited about a few thousand dollars when I'm gonna on my plans to make way more. So I was just there, like you know, I made like like for in taxes last year, I did like seventy thousand. But nice. then I made a lot of money that I never claimed, like on the phone. Of course, yeah. 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 Leo knows all about that. And then, oh, yeah. and then, like you know, so I probably like you know hit close to six figures, close. But I I did spend it kind of dumb because I was uh fucking going through some shit with my ex at the mm-hmm. time, and then got married this year. Mm-hmm. Sure. So, yeah, dude. Can I ask you guys this? Because sometimes when I'm doing the YouTube thing, I ask myself if I could do it all over again. Most people get into comedy right after college. It seems to be the most common stand-up age. Mm -hmm. I ask myself, if I could go back to being 23, have my diploma and my cap on my head, freshly walking off the UCLA campus, would I go down the YouTube path or would I start hitting open mics and do the LA stand-up scene, the real way of doing comedy, the pedigree, normal stand-up path? I ask myself that and I go back and forth on it. What's your guys take on what you see happening on YouTube? These YouTube personalities coming up that are quote unquote comedians, but who don't do stand up. They just have a podcast where they make a hundred grand a month on Patreon or they do a blue chew ad for fucking 20 grand a pop on their main channel videos. How do you guys see that? And do you have any regret about doing the stand up circuit as opposed to this? Well, I, I don't think there's a clear path, you know, in any way, but there's there's certain comics that did both, started doing both mm-hmm. and mastered both. Mm-hmm. Trevor Wallace is a great Trevor example. Trevor Wallace is very, he's a good comedian yeah. uh, and he, he, he masters yeah. the YouTube game too. But he had to put that time in live stand up to also build that. Right. Then there's, then there's you guys, for example, who already have an audience who, you know, your shows are your people a lot of times. But mm-hmm. so what's your opinion? On that? Already know your, your voice. Mm-hmm. Personally, uh, I was such a big fan of stand-up. I, when I watched YouTube, I was watching stand-ups. Mm-hmm. So I 
synced it as the same thing. Me too. Yeah. I, I'm a way bigger fan of stand-up than I am of watching right. YouTubers. Yeah. But for me, it was just a business decision that I can reach a lot more people on sure. the YouTube platform sure. versus if I'm going and playing cloudy bars where there are 20 disinterested people. Sure. I, I guess I was more interested in that immediate um, response. Mm -hmm. the laughter. immediate laughter. The immediate acceptance mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. I, I almost felt like... Can uh, you give uh, a random mic? No. I almost felt like with my opinion on that shit, it's, it's kind of... For comics who who get too prideful on, on stand up and when they get too like fuck that man, they're ruining the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. they're coming in. They don't understand grind. Is that a lot how, is that how a lot of comics talk? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. I uh, know I'm not talking about the accent. I'm no. talking about is that the sentiment? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like man, they don't understand fuck the those grind. Guys, man. Fucking up the grind. Of fuck it. <laughs> Should I have to fucking wash dishes and wipe assholes, dude? <laughs> he has to at least wipe one asshole before yeah. he gets oh to what I yeah. did. Yeah. You know, all these things and uh, uh, and and yeah, you know, everyone has a different path. I've always told stand ups to get the fuck over themselves. No yeah. one no one's you're you're not gonna grow a business with just your fucking voice talking yeah. just your perspective for years and years to come right. especially just off stand up you better be on some fucking movies yeah. mm -hmm. and doing, doing some other shit that excites people to the point where they want to have to like where they want to hear your voice you're not just going to be imposing I've been doing stand up for 30 years yeah. and that's all I've been doing is like yeah you've been annoying people for fucking 20 we liked your first 10 yeah. now you've just been talking for now the fucking rest talking. 20 and it's the last time I'm telling uh, like I always tell comics get into acting get into the mm -hmm. fucking YouTube mm -hmm. if you if you meet someone who's doing uh uh, YouTube and, and he's and he wants to do your show put him on your fucking show learn something from mm -hmm, the dude dude don't mm -hmm. fucking start commenting like man never you know I mean of course man yeah, maybe they're not gonna last in the stand-up game yeah you know what I mean maybe yeah maybe they are just in it to just take a little dip and that's it like you know but fuck it dude like so learn, keep an open mind yeah keep an open mind don't like, what if I what if a stand-up comic is dabbling in human trafficking <laughs> Try that too. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that. That struck a chord with Renee. That struck a chord. <laughs> what do you know about human trafficking, Renee? I, like, oh. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> I got a good side hustle. You I, were talking about those earlier. I gotta ask, like, uh, I, you don't maybe you don't have to name names, or if you want to, but if you ever have any uh, big comedians come in there and just rip lines in the back, or. You know, get some hookers into the green room or anything like that. I'm definitely not gonna name, mention any names on that, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, I I've def we definitely see like comics get in their uh, big comics. Their, yeah, big comics with the cocaine and mm. you know, uh, like like especially like when when you see see them in in your home club and you're comfortable there, you know, and and. It's just it's one of those things where you just see it and you're like you know I I assumed it the whole time like you know those comics that you're like yeah this guy does it or you you'll usually also hear it from other comics like man when he comes he's gonna do a lot of coke or something like that so you're like yeah. when you see that like you know it's it's gonna happen or something like that uh, but I've I've never been like shocked uh, have I been influenced and then have I dabbled in it yeah yeah of course you know course. because you know when especially like, you know when it's like a uh, like like uh, like let's just say for example this is one big name I went on the road with, uh, I didn't go on the road with him but he he was on the show out mm -hmm. while while I was on the road mm -hmm. and he put out some some coke and I was just like and he asked me what I wanted so I was like yeah I'll do something <laughs> yeah of course man Mexican mm -hmm. fucking Mexican did you just fucking call me Mexican <laughs> the fuck dude what the <laughs> fuck dude Dino man Dino you're embarrassing me and Danny dude Dino like, what the fuck. <laughs> Well, this is not the kind of shit. Fucking. We have these esteemed <laughs> comedian guests, and you're just absolutely berating them with with racial with your racist epithets? shit. <laughs> the fuck, do you know? I'm gonna fuck you. I know. He doesn't you. deny it. It's it, 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 like <laughs> fuck, dude. You would think that we would like ask him to do something like that or something. This motherfucker is just crazy. And man. it's tough to hit back at him because he doesn't say anything other than yeah. Mexican or terrorist. So these yeah. guys, they have no weakness to attack. Yeah. And he's got a big cock, unfortunately. Yeah. And he's a white dude. And he's Christian. Mm -hmm. So he's a hard. He's like a panzer tank rolling in and just picking is, off infantry men. Is it bigger than Inland Iggy's? Because I've heard of, of that guy. It's comparable. Comp it's He's pretty close, yeah. He's a fan, dude. You love Mudflap, dude. We were talking about Mudflap. Yeah, so all your characters, I, I don't watch them so much in your videos, but mm. when I see them in real life, when you guys have your meetups or you have your shows... They're so nice in person and hilarious. Yeah. They're, they're, they're such great Every guys. Every one of the characters we have are... Absolutely nice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And Ralph they do especially. anything. Oh, they do anything Danny or Leo say. It's true. Uh, even sexual stuff. 
Especially he smoked yeah. that one guy smoked foreskin. Mm, yes, cigar guy. Yeah, yeah, cigar guy, and he is, has probably the highest IQ How'd of all the Danny Mullen underlings. He saved it was it, his own thing foreskin. He's done, yeah. Good question though, Renee. It's a very good question. He got it shipped overnight from his dad's house in Denver because his oh, dad's his a dad creep. Foreskin too. <laughs> His dad, his dad <laughs> kept his foreskin. foreskin. It's a family what if my thing. My dad was just trafficking foreskins. Oh my like, god! Like that, guess, that's they got some was, stem cells in there. He I was think. just traffic, traffic. Johnny yeah. Mitchell actually had a joke about that after at the show yeah. when it happened. Johnny Mitchell was talking about what if foreskin catches on and people become addicted to foreskin and people start sucking dick for foreskin. <laughs> there was a there was Johnny a Mitchell's been bombing. Really? <laughs> yeah, he's talking shit, dude. <laughs> no, the past two shows I booked him on, I've uh, I've gotten a complaint from the owner and the other producer. Really? Who's that comedian? He sucks. No, dude. It, uh, does the the owners just come up and Johnny Mitchell, stop bombing. I know you're no, funny, they, they, but they, stop bombing my show. <laughs> Holy shit! And they probably come. They probably said some fucked up shit about me. Hopefully, she said I was attractive at least. You know. You don't like, even no, know who I'm talking about. about. You assuming because of the accent? Or the accent, yes. Is I mean, that the haha? It uh, might be. Hey, I sold that place out my one show. Uh, Didn't they, matter oh, how bad you. I did. He loves you. Didn't dude. matter. The owner mm. Jack came up to me and he goes, oh, "How's your friend Danny?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Good." And he goes, when you when you when you sell out, yeah. He goes, "He made me some money." You're gonna get your face painted on that wall. Money Jack talks, man, baby. Dude. Money talks. My first stand-up show ever. They liked uh, me more than out. a lot of big-time proven road comics. I cut off. Sure. I cut off Ace Ventura though, over there, my man. Ace Ventura. He does look like Ace Ventura. <laughs> dude, that was the hilarious day. The first day that you came and sold yeah. that place out. I'm I was sorry. so drunk, man. Yeah, he went. You went up and said something about animal sex. Yeah, animal yeah, sex, yeah. Dude, that yeah. was my entire first piece of material. <laughs> He's like, animal sex is okay. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Yeah, yeah. And That's all good. these Danny Mullen feds are just like, yeah. 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 Are, you, are you planning to do stand up? I like doing stand up, and I always. I, Renee just asked me if I wanted to do stand up. I'm always keeping a document of stand up material and like ideas to flesh out. I love it. I listen to it all the time. I watch it all the time. I think maybe in 10 years I would start getting into it. But right now, I know that I'm making good money on YouTube, sure. and I sure, love sure. I love what I do on YouTube. Sure. Honestly, Are you going to be an actor? No, I have no gift for acting and no passion for being in somebody else's watered down PC Hollywood project. Sure. But the th the reason I value YouTube a lot and I like YouTube and what I do is because so many great people have been doing stand up for so long that a lot of what I would want to say on stage was said by Louis C.K. in 2008 twice as well, or by George Carlin in 1992. That's 100% true, and, and, and that's another reason why I tell comics, like, dude, you have to understand, like, you know, like, this, this stand-up thing, like, people only listen to you for so long, and it's just like, and everyone's ex attention spans are getting smaller and smaller, yeah. and then you gotta find something else, and that's why, I, that's why I'm taking my acting classes now, and, yeah. you know, I'm trying to use my face on stage and trying to Absolutely. find my voice on stage and trying to, uh, gonna take voiceover classes and stuff like that because it's like you gotta find yeah. your other your other things, man. And then eventually, if I, if I have to, dude, I'll, I'll sell my asshole. That's right, dude. So hey, one one time for the people though, Adina, could you put a camera on Renee? Could you do the the Indian face? What Indian face? The Indian Seven Eleven face oh, you do on stage sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see it straight on. Look, you look, look at me right now. Look at him right now. Watch Mexican, Mexican, Indian. That's my, <laughs> that's my father right there. We need to get uh, Ray. We should bring you out for some video oh, shoots. Oh, God. For sure. He would be classic, bro. Both of them could be 7 Eleven and yeah. boys. Fit, dude. Oh, my That'd God. That'd be his minion or something. It just oh the more because everybody, when we go out, the image that all the people in LA have in their head of shithead YouTuber looks. Mostly like Austin, but a little bit like me, too. Just a white asshole dude with a shitty haircut and nice sneakers. <laughs> if they see that, they're going to know you're an idiot fucking with them for the internet. The more you can get away from that image they have in their head. Leo's an example. Leo looks like the cover of a romance novel. They're not expecting that. Um, we have this guy, King Croc, who's an African-American man. People aren't ready for that. They certainly won't be ready for somebody who looks like Renee doing the 7-Eleven face. God and especially damn. if you're wearing some very authentic 7-Eleven employee clothes, <laughs> you can pull a prank on these people with us where yeah. they just won't be expecting it. Down, it's one of the reasons I like filming out of LA because people aren't ready for YouTubers in the various yeah. other places in the country, in the heartland. Mm -hmm. But here we need people like you to fool with them. No, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I was I was actually like, you know, just talking to my friend the other day about like, you know, 
pulling like those, those kind of videos and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, dude, anything you guys are down for, I'm down, dude. If you guys want to use my face for any racial terrorist Mexican <laughs> <laughs> shit, I'm down. Can yeah. I use your face for other stuff? Yeah. <laughs> he has spots with fathead. No way. What the fuck's fathead? Fathead's like that fucking. It's the company. It's well, not. It's not. Sports, uh, it's uh, put them on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. When sport things you put on the wall. No, no it's, it's like, like it's yeah, not yeah, playing anything. Of, like, it's like Tom you can put like Brady. Tom Brady on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, like a, it's like a cardboard cutout, but a yeah. sticker. Like, yeah, I got yeah, one exactly. of Tom Brady. I told nice. them send me one of Tom Brady. They sent me one of Tom Brady. Got one of my wife and I. How are you sponsored by them? Well, no, I'm not sponsored by them. He just likes to. I don't know. They they emailed me and they sent me some free stuff. Nice. Ollie. Sponsors pay, and man. He t- and he has to make a video for that. We have to have fact-checked, bulletproof material on here. We can't be putting out that yeah. Big Head is sponsoring one yeah, of these comedians. Yeah, dude, what the hell, man? Dude, that's, I that's... thought there was going to be a cutout of him on a Big wall head. somewhere. That no, would be a genuine that sponsor. Be, yeah. Yeah. That'd be incredible. That would Dino would throw knives at it if it was on the wall of his He trailer. would definitely purchase it, though. He would purchase it only <laughs> to deface it with <laughs> knives. <Yeah. laughs> It'd be crazy. Nah, dude, but... Uh, as far as like Ali, man, you know, I, I've noticed that you know he's he's starting to get the watch. Yeah, he, I know. He got How married. much is that watch? He's he got getting married. big time. He's getting big time. How much was it? I don't know. What What's the value of that watch? Give me your best. It's a Michael Kors watch. I'll probably say the value oh, is like a hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, okay, <that's, laughs> all right, that's funny. Yeah, Michael Kors. I like that you said that he got the watch. Right? And it's Michael Kors. That's a chick watch, first of all, Ali. Well, this is the man version. Michael Kors doesn't make man version. Oh shit! You Have you seen Michael of- Kors? He's, is he a person? Is he's, a real person? he's a person. He's a gay yeah. dude. Yeah. He actually seems pretty fun, but I don't think masculine items is his specialty. Oh man, no. I, think I like Nicki Minaj. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have Michael Kors watch. Uh, I have, I have two Michael Kors watch, and they're kind of like more gold. Nice. And yeah, one of them does look a little feminine. Yeah, yeah man. that's their thing, and they're. I mean, I'm, at least they're cheap. So no, and you know, you know, it's crazy. I bought this watch. It was like two hundred dollars, right? And it had like, uh, I think I have it on. Yeah, I have it on right now. Dude. Oh, shit. There look, it is. Dude. Look at this. The mind of a drug dealer. Look at this, dude. Yeah, it's nice. No, no, but yeah, it's Michael Kors. I bought it. It was like $200, right? And then um, I'm like, dude, as I get home, like as I'm I'm drunk, I'm like, this looks like a fucking girl watch. Uh-huh. That one's really sparkly. I was just like, this looks like a fucking girl watch. But then at the end of the day, I look at uh, I look at um, myself in the mirror, I'm like, but I look like a fucking, like a fucking rapper, dude. Yeah. Like, right, a, like, yeah. A, like, a, like a like a nav. Mm-hmm. Yeah. His name? You gotta feel Nas. good. Nas? Nas. You gotta feel Nas. good on stage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Renee, I, I one time I went up with a cutoff on on stage, like a cutoff shirt or whatever, like a like a tank top. And Renee was like, "Hey man, you, you gotta dress up on stage like you're going on a date." And since then, I've 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 upped my my dressing standards on on stage. Yeah, he used to come in in just shorts. I would be like shorts in a tank, like yeah. an idiot. Except one time, Leo came in. With, with with no like didn't have proper clothes and he didn't know he was gonna be on the show mm-hmm. and so he went to the trunk of my car mm. got my sweatpants and this nasty t-shirt and he looked like a model and it pissed me off everybody was giving me compliments that day about my outfit it was crazy okay thank you you want to end the podcast on another self-serving story oh stop sure didn't sound like austin <laughs> the only reason i do that is because i don't know anything about music or books so i try to talk about things you can relate to which is pussy there's honestly pussy's a great uh, subject to come back to it is a universally accepted subject like everybody listening right now is curious about pussy oh, i wanted to mention this earlier just now that i have the on Oprah, they advertise these foreskin facial creams that people use to keep their face young. Yeah, I've heard about those. I'm proud of Austin for watching Oprah. Yeah, it's interesting. I've actually. never watched Oprah. Aww. <laughs> he saw a highlight that some conservative pundit was commenting on. No, someone in my live stream yesterday was telling me about it's it. It's ground so foreskin? It yeah, and apparently people have been using these products for like a while. It's been it was around, on yeah. Oprah. It's literally like a facial cream that has stem cells basically from right. foreskin in it. My sister used to work at uh, Macy's. They have it. They're ex- it's very expensive cream. Yeah, your sister didn't need the cream to get foreskins on her face. You fucking son of a bitch. So he's talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. What time is it, Austin? Uh, it's 109. Oh yeah, let's. Uh, what what recording time? Uh, you, you guys pitch, uh, pitch whatever you wanna you wanna shout out on the pod. Uh, Renee, you go first. What you come see your shows in L.A. Or what no, else? yeah, man, I have a rooftop show uh, every Saturday in Van Nuys. Uh, mm-hmm. It's four twenty friendly. It's BYOB. With each ticket, you fucking get a joint. 
nice. Um, it's pretty dope. I have my shows uh, on Sundays at the Haha. Ha. Mm-hmm. Well, just follow me on Instagram if you guys want, want to go to any show, any right. city you're at. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to be doing it. This is how we do it in the WWF. Let's go. Yo, yeah. Renee Baca Comedy. Say your Instagram handle. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you any V as in Victor A C A comedy Renee Vaca comedy? I'll link it below. All right, hell yeah. Thank Ali, you. mine's a uh, Prince Ali comedy. I got a couple of dates coming up every Monday and Tuesday at the Haha mm. Chicago this weekend. Nice. Uh, Laugh Factory on the fourteenth and San Diego Laugh Factory on the twenty first. Sick, dude. Oh, and if you're in Fresno, I'm gonna be filming. Uh, if you're in Fresno, I'm gonna be filming thirty minutes of my material. Uh, awesome. I'm gonna be filming 30 minutes of my material and at the Tower Theater, so if you guys want to go out and just be part of the filming process, yeah, wear your bulletproof vest. The, August the Tower Theater, that's yeah. where it's at. Yeah, Tower Theater. <laughs> that, there's no way that's not in a sketchy area. It's in the Tower District it's in the Fresno. Best part of Fresno. Oh. It's actually the his, it's actually like one of the, the historic best theaters in Fresno. It's, the Hell best yeah. part of Fresno. it's not it's not it's not the best part of Fresno. No. Yeah, historic theaters are never in good places. No, yeah. Leo and I, you can't lie to us either. We did a video in Fresno and we spoke to all those junkies right there in the middle of downtown. Yeah, Fresno, Fresno's the most unsafe I've felt in California ever. Mm-hmm. It's Fresno's yeah, fucked. Fresno is where I used to, used to go party when. When I was in Merced, man. That's, oh my God, that's dude! For our Fresno, and then, then the people f- from Fresno would come party with us in Merced because we had ranch houses. That's how we would party in Merced. You go to a ranch house party, dude. If you were inside the ranch house party, God damn, you were in. Shit, no. you, you were. Can, you can do anything. I'm not sure what you were in. You were in the orgy. Oh, no, no, just kidding, no, just kidding, no, just kidding. <laughs> the only problem was a uh, horse was in there too. Cigar guy's <laughs> been going to swinger clubs. I can see so that. I can see yeah. that. Him. He's a sex addict. Don't though. you have to be like in a relationship to go to a swinger club? You're just going to jerk off. Apparently not. He said he got blown by like three chicks at the same time. Oh my god! I'm dude. starting to think we need to hook Cigar Guy up to a polygraph. He's been telling us a lot about this pussy he's getting. Yeah. Every like few weeks, you'll learn some crazy mystery about Cigar Guy's past. Like soon, I'll find out that he was on Dancing with the Stars or some shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely has some game, so I'm not completely ruling this out, but. Th- I mean, Leo, have you been blown by three girls at once? No, never. I've been, I've been, I've been trying to come up with some random ass thing to say, mm. but I, I, I feel like uh, I've. With Dino. Yeah, yeah, with Dino, but like I feel like like the word cracker is is like not even offensive or like yeah. it's yeah. not even. So I'm just trying to come up with something. What is the word that white people? Yeah, what could we what, say? What to can Dino? we say? If you just accused him of being gay. Yeah. And you came up with some evidence for that on yeah. the fly. But, that's what would wound him the but, most. But, but, but like, but like, what, I, I guess what I'm asking, what is the term? You can't. There isn't one. There isn't. Uh, one. There's nothing you can say to a white man about his whiteness that'll make him feel bad. Yeah. You can tell you, him he has a tiny cock, but you can't tell him he has a tiny. You fucking cock. pink cock. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. Dino, did that hurt? Yeah, Louis C.K., yeah. speaking of Louis C.K. always having done it better, Louis C.K.'s got a bit about how ineffective the word cracker is. He's like, oh, yes, the word cracker. Did you know it references the cracking of the whip that plantation owners used to do oh when God. they owned people and property? Oh, I owned people and property. Oh tragedy, tragedy. So, yeah, yeah it's... Louis C.K. said it all, man. He's good. He's bro. done... Dude, even... There is a narrative that he sucked in the 90s, and that's when he was finding himself. But you go watch old clips of him on Conan or Letterman doing basically stand up on the couch on these late night shows. And he was fucking great yeah. back then. Yeah. He's always been great, yeah. except for maybe like in 1988 or something. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, guys, go out, support live comedy, man. Whenever these guys are in your town. Well, live comedy. If you're in LA. It's so half assed. No, Good just, God, they're just like support live you know, comedy. Support live comedy, man. You fucking Hi. follow us, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> and Dino, uh, I don't know anything to say to Dino. Dino fucking gay. Dino fucking gay. Dino fucking gay, dude, on that note.